guys, welcome back to the Kit and Krista podcast, episode 43. Look at how in the festive holiday spirit we are. Ta-da! Uh, apologies to our audio listeners, we have a nice pink, hot pink Christmas tree. It's with all sorts of hot pink. Great Nintendo ornaments, we're it's wearing, wearing our, our holiday, holiday sweatshirts. Sweaters. It's delightful. It's very nice, it's the best time of the year. Right. Yeah. Um, although, the story we're telling you today... Mm. It's very interesting, but we're going to be diving into some... Nintendo, come into my office and close the door. I want you to sit down. <laughs> we need to, we need to have, have a talk about what, what you're doing with the Smash community because it's time to stop. Please. Stun it. Cut ties. Move on. Yeah. All of the above. Count the losses. It's yes. not working. What you're doing, Nintendo. So we're going to talk all about... How Nintendo just needs to stop trying to control My the goodness. Smash Brothers community, competitive community. And there's been a lot of drama that we're going to dive into. And you and I have worked so much when we were at Nintendo with the competitive team there. And we might have some interesting insights. I, for one, am sick and tired of it. I can't imagine how they feel. All of us. Again, it's time to stop. Collectively tired This of is it. the intervention. Yes. Um, as usual, everything that we do on this channel is made possible by our wonderful Patreon subscribers. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. You know, we've done just so many cool things with the community. We're gearing up for, once again, another meetup. That's right. Coming up in December We're for the holidays. We're going to be playing the new Mario Kart yes. uh, DLC. It's going to be gonna wonderful. Be yep, we continue to have a great time in our Discord. Um, we've been doing these new things that I really like. We want to integrate our community voices into the podcast more. So we started doing these polls yeah. every week. And you got a really good one on the Mario trailer that these we're are gonna always be very interesting. About. Yeah. Very insightful. You guys are like the smartest people ever. And we just love interacting with you guys, hanging out with you guys. So join us, yes. please. It's Starts wonderful. At just two dollars a mm -hmm. month. You can get early access, you can get exclusive content. You can hang out with us. Yes. It's a great time. It's a great time. We are at patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. We'll leave the link right over here. It's a good gift for somebody for the holidays, you know. Or yourself. Or yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, um, I want to say thank you to everybody for putting up with my croaky voice last oh week. Gosh, We're yes. back in the studio after two weeks of uh, going remote. Yeah. I am like 99%. You sound so much better. Better. I've yeah. got my little cup of water here. Please <laughs> excuse me if I have a cough. Yeah, here you, and there. you did good. It's you almost, did okay. I, I've expelled almost everything. All the phlegm has yes, been expelled it almost. Has. Um, I'm glad you're feeling better right on time because we are heading off. Oh my gosh. By the time this podcast is out, yeah. we will be in LA for the wonderful Game Awards. That's right. Which we are super excited about. I was very worried because I was like, you need to get better before the Game Awards. Oh yeah. It's going to be a fantastic time. We're going to see a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're going to be... Um, at the show and excited about to see if our predictions have come true right. or not. One of yours is already A lot of mine are already gone. <laughs> oh, well. So we'll see how it goes. I want to meet the stray cat. <laughs> oh, yeah. On the red carpet. Yeah. I want to hug that cat if it wins a Game of the Year award. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a great time. I'm really looking forward to it. It's been a while it is. since we've been to that award show. Yeah. So. We're going to be vlogging our trip. Yes. Um, that's going to be the Super Kitten Krista 64 episode mm -hmm. for next week. We'll t tell you now. It is a tight turnaround for this vlog. Yeah. Because we need to get it out by Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, our wonderful editor, which just happens to be you. It's me. <laughs> uh, you're going to be crunching on that over I'll the weekend. I'll crunch over the weekend. It's uh, okay. I'm going to be kicking my feet up. Um, <laughs> you're like, my job is done. Such is I life. was in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I actually love editing our vlogs. It's one of my favorite things to do. I'm just so glad that I actually enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but editing our vlogs is like such a, a cool way for me to look back on great memories. And I, I think it's going to be fun for me to edit that one over the weekend. Once I come back from the Game Awards, we'll be nice and relaxed and I can, I can get that one yeah. out. And then of course our, our uh, Patreon subscribe to get it early. Right, so, right. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of great stuff in this vlog. In addition to all the Game Awards, we are meeting up with a good friend of ours who we have not seen for a long time who's in LA. I'm so excited it's about It's Roger's this. base. Yay! Finally yes. reunited! Um, we have been friends with Roger for a really long time. Obviously, he was one of our wonderful creators in the Nintendo Creator Program that I led. But I've, we've known Roger for yeah. like ever. Right. Um, we're great friends. And Roger was one of the people that we also reached out to when we started our little venture mm -hmm. um, earlier this year. And he gave us such good advice yes. and such wonderful encouragement. And it's going to be so much fun to just see him in person and just hang out. 
we're going to be telling a great story with Roger um, on the next episode of the podcast, right. which is going to be really cool. We're going to do that. He's going to be in the vlog. He might have something cooked up for us to do. Yes. He for has his something channel. kind of... Ri- Kind of cool cooked up for us. Cool to and do. maybe controversial. Yes. Sounds good. Sounds great. Um, we're no strangers to controversy though, because our Nuzlocke is out. We have escaped <laughs> the law. We're still here. We're, we're on, so the, here. on the lamb. We're on the lamb. Why maybe, do they call it that? I don't know. I don't do know we need either. to get disguises? Fake passports, disguises. <laughs> like I'm, the born I know, identity? I'm gonna get I'm gonna get pulled into the room at the airport. <gasps> like, sir, come with me. You're gonna get you're gonna get uh, stopped. You gotta get a fake face. Okay, I can do that by yeah. in, a, in like two days, right? Do some plastic surgery. Yeah. Some self plastic surgery. A mission surgery. impossible mask I can pull off. <laughs> pull off. <laughs> I'm, I, I get I get a Jeff Keeley mask and I host the TGAs and then I pull it off and it's me. you yeah. all along and then you get arrested off the stage. That sounds cool, actually. That, I think he'd be into that. That's a good, good way to go. It's a good way to go. And he's in the back, he's got like a like a go, ga- like a, a gag, gag on. There's like the, that big hook that comes to like yeah. hook you off the stage. Yeah. I'd be okay with that. Right. Actually, as That'd a way be fun. to go. Um, um, but. Uh, there's there's a stench of failure in the air with this Nuzlocke. Um, yeah. It's out now. You should watch this. Definitely watch it. I think we should try again, though. Uh, maybe I should try it without you because uh, you seem to be the limiting factor. I was very overconfident. You, you were. I think that was my problem. Well, you started out really scared. You're like, I can't do anything. I can't fight anything. Yeah, I started out scared and then my confidence grew exponentially as I was going Man. along and it was very like unfounded confidence yeah as I, I was I definitely take the blame for our demise so I think we should do it again the other thing that was very oh, unexpected but maybe expected for this game is that there was something glitchy that happened to us in this it was video a bad omen. that you guys should definitely watch because it was like a, a head scratcher for me and yeah. it was kind of hilarious honestly it was pretty funny and entertaining I just could not have imagined anything going quite as bad as that Nuzlocke video. So watch it and tell us what you think. If you want us to do another one, we'd be open to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Last thing before we get into this, um, we are planning our big Game of the Year episode. I'm so excited about this. Which will be coming out the week leading up to Christmas. Right. Um, But we are going to be sharing our picks, but... For our Patreon subscribers um, next week, we're going to be putting up polls for them to also vote. Yeah. So there'll be, there'll be our picks and, and also our community picks, our community picks as yeah. well. And again, this is going to be a big episode for the community. We want to hear, if you're already a Patreon subscriber, we want you to vote. We want to hear your opinions and comments. Right. This is a special episode. Like like all the normal stuff we do, news, story, like no, we're not well, doing we'll do anything. The whole thing, the whole thing is game of the game year. Of the year. Yes. It's going to be really fun. Um, and we're so excited to bring our community like into this episode right. with us. So again, you can join and vote good, and good be time part to of subscribe. It. Good yeah. time, yeah. It's going to be really cool. I think make your voice really heard. Fun. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right, a lot going right. on this week as usual. There is. There uh, is. One last thing, though. Mm. This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Mm-hmm. Love mm-hmm. us some HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Yes, we are huge fans of HelloFresh. Love it. Especially this time of year yeah. when you just are short on time. Maybe you need to save a few dollars for your Christmas gifts mm-hmm. or, or whatever else That's you right. might be doing for the holidays. HelloFresh does both. You know, you don't have to go to the grocery store. Um, everything is pre-proportioned and, and sent straight to your door. The meals are super easy to make and really delicious yes, you're, as well. You're saving time both ways. Time time is so important. Time is money, people. Right, right now, in this time yes. of the year. Yes, you do not need to go to the grocery store. The grocery store is jammed with people who don't know what they're doing. Skip that. <laughs> and then you get... That's all like the, your pet peeve. It is. You get all the stuff <laughs> and it's really quick to put it all together. Yeah. So you're so efficient. You are. And I, I have been in like a cooking lull. I just want easy stuff right now because I'm going to prepare for the big Christmas dinner yeah. cook-off. Right. So I just want something simple to get me through the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And this is absolutely perfect. So you guys should definitely go and check it out. Yeah. And they have a new festive eats category with oh, all sorts it. of uh, foods which are yeah, uh, set stuff. for the season, which is just wonderful. Yeah. So... Go to HelloFresh.com slash KitKrista18 and use code KitKrista18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com slash KitKrista18 and use KitKrista18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. 
Wow, HelloFresh wow. is America's number one meal kit. 18, can you believe that? 18 free meals is like almost half the month, which is yeah. awesome. And we're gonna put the link right here and also in the description below. So go check it out. That's right. All right, uh, before we get into our big smash topic, we do have some a, a fun Christmas topic to kind of- We've got two actually. Let's ease us yeah. ourselves into this not so fun conversation about smash uh, with some fun Christmas themed yeah. stuff. So for story time today, we're going to be telling you guys about a Christmas episode for Nintendo Minute that gone that basically went horribly awry and resulted in us committing multiple crimes, including stealing a Christmas tree. Seems, I don't know how we've not been arrested Seems already. to be a trend for you. Yeah, we are criminals, clearly. Um, <laughs> we. You were part of the Nuzlocke, too. Uh, you are also part of the st stealing of the Christmas tree. Right. Don't. Try to pin this on me. All right. Um, but yeah, let's let's go and get get us get into that story. It's yes. pretty fun. So um, we planned a fun holiday episode where we were going to be making Nintendo themed snow globes right. with our good friend Captain Dangerous, yes. who is again part of the Nintendo um, influencer program. We had done videos with her before. She's mm -hmm. really wonderful. Absolutely genius artist yeah so we were talking with her we're gonna do it we pick a date um planned it out had everything ready to go then things went all wrong yeah and poor captain dangerous basically you know she she had to travel to the studio right she's so she ba was, she's based in like the midwest right so yeah. she basically had this long flight it wasn't like you know she was local and we could have picked another right. date or time she she had flown in specifically for this episode. Also, this is, like you were saying, this is quite a seasonal episode, so we had a pretty tight timeline on when we could film and put it out right. before it was no longer Christmas or no longer the holidays. Yeah. Um, so she gets here. We hear from the producers that the power is out. Right, we wake up, there's, there's a huge storm that has yeah, come through. a huge storm. And it doesn't rain here very often here. No. It's like a once or twice a year kind of thing that we get a pretty big storm. Yeah, but around this time of year, we do tend to get it. Yeah, so it had knocked out power in our office, right. which is strange because I still had it at my house. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is, we're in, we're in this big like office park. Like yeah. they should be pretty covered. Mm, but that office is really janky. Yeah. It had like a lot of problems. Like I remember other times we've had bad storms the office ceiling would leak. Oh, really? And there was like somebody that was on our Latin America team that would have to put like a literal bucket like under his, like in his cube. We did have bug problems too. Yeah, we there had were a like lot ants, of ant problems. Gnats, gnats. Fruit flies. Yep. The leaks were really bad. It would be like yeah. dripping water down into people's desks. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, that would happen one time when it rained. There was another time when it rained where the road outside of the office got, flooded. got completely flooded right. and all of us had to go this like really roundabout way to get out of the parking lot. Right. Trees were down ones. So the office is not like the best, really. <laughs> yeah, was... so, the, so the power's out and they're like, yeah, like everybody's just working from home today, which, yeah. which was really like a foreign concept. Yeah. Because this was like pre-pandemic. It was like, oh, working from home. Wow. What, what is that? Is that yeah. going to be okay? Like, well, how's it going to go? I know. Do we have our stuff? Like, right, yeah. right. Oh my gosh, that's But it was so like, weird. we need to do this shoot today because mm -hmm. she is leaving and she cannot come back and we yeah. need to do this. Right. So what are... Our options right right so we get in touch with you know our producers um, the people at the office who would know about like different facilities types things and we found out like I said we're in this big office park mm -hmm. there is a building that had this sort of communal Space. meeting room yeah. that, that different companies could like rent out and it happened to be available so we said all right well we'll take that yeah and, and the power was on in there Right, again, for only for, for some, some reason. reason. It was only it was like very short distance from our building, so I'm not sure why one building right. was okay and one wasn't, so it was very right. strange. So we said, fine, we'll do that. You know, the producers are lugging all the equipment over. I felt so bad for them. They tell had so much stuff. Captain Daedrus to meet us at this random office location. location. <laughs> yeah. Um but we get there and you know, we look at the room and it's like really like bare bones. It's it like, is really ugly. It's is like this is this say. is not really the festive holiday right. setting we want for this nice yeah, video. Yeah, exactly. And it wasn't like a controlled environment like our studio either. So like the production team was really struggling with like lighting it and all that stuff. Yeah. And so we were just like 
trying to do a lot in the very short time we had with poor Captain Dangerous, who was just like very patiently waiting for us to do all this stuff. And she had a flight out later right. that day. So it was just it was very stressful, like trying to figure out what can we do, um, you know, sort of on this like set that would actually make sense. Right. So, you know, we're, we're getting all of our normal equipment set up there. And out of the corner of my eye, we see in the lobby, there's a really nice decorated big Christmas tree. Yeah. They do decorate the office buildings for Christmas right. or for the holidays, I guess. And every building had a Christmas tree sort of in the common lobby area and like some of these garlands that would go up the stairs and a wreath. So that was something like, I guess, the building, yeah. like whoever manages the building right. was doing for the entire it's office nice. park. Yeah. So it wasn't like a Nintendo thing. It wasn't no. like we could have asked somebody that no, no, worked no, no, at no. Nintendo to see if we could like right. take it, you know? Yeah. So we just decide, like, well, we need to steal this Christmas tree. <laughs> and it was maybe, like, it was like, it's like 100 feet to get it from where it was in the lobby yeah. to this conference room. But again, this is like a 10-foot Christmas tree, full ornaments, like, ready to it go. It was, like, crazy. It was not a real tree, so it was not, like, crazy heavy. Yeah. But it was not an easy thing to do either. But there were also people coming and going. So we were had to like we had an espionage. Bus business was in session at this office. We're we don't work at any of these places. <laughs> so it was like, uh, let's unplug it, like take it six inches, and then like somebody would come down and you'd be like, you'd be doing like the, the, the cool routine of like, hey, how's it going, Jack? Um, and then wait for them to leave and then move it like another. And like, we had like a lookout. People were looking out to see if like, the facilities person was going to walk by right. and get us in trouble for like taking it. Yeah, I mean, they definitely, if we caught, they definitely would have reported it, us back to Nintendo and it wouldn't, I mean, it wouldn't have been terrible, but it wouldn't have been great. It would have been great. Like, it what, are you, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. We've done a lot of shady stuff, but that was probably the shadiest one where we had to steal the Christmas tree. Yeah. So we ended up vlogging this whole thing. Ornaments and all, like dropping ornaments along the way. It was like something out of a cartoon, you know? It was, like it was yeah. like it was like ridiculous. Um, into this conference room to use as the backdrop. And I'm gonna we're gonna put the video here, obviously, yeah. so you guys can see. But that whole set was stolen property, basically. Yeah, we just made up. Made up on the fly, stolen Christmas tree. But it turned out yeah. being a really nice video. It turned out to be a really nice video. I always loved those DIY videos that we did on Nintendo Minute. It was something that was like so different than our normal day-to-day -day yeah. stuff. And we have, we've had like Captain mm -hmm. Dangerous on. We've had Gone to Chris on. Some of her stuff is still in this, in this yeah. studio. So it's always nice to do that. But I, I just felt like she was such a good sport. She might even help to set it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, she was our guest, but she definitely was not like... Precious about like right. oh I, what are you guys doing this yeah. is so like unprofessional. <laughs> I still have that snow globe. It's I a do wonder, too. Wonderful yeah, snow globe. It's so yeah. cute. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. It's there it not is. always glamorous, you guys, at the Nintendo Minute Productions. We've Scrappy. Had a lot of weird things that, that have happened to us over the years. This is definitely the on the top of the list for one of the weirder things. Yeah. Um. But yes, we are thieves. We are Christmas <laughs> wow. thieves. I'm going to have to get a new passport for that for that fake passport I just got. <laughs> <laughs> just keep sending them to me. <laughs> Not pictured. A Christmas no, tree yeah. <laughs> that you stole it. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. All um, right. All right. On to our Never a Minute segment, which mm -hmm. is uh, we each came up with lists of games that get us in the holiday spirit. Yeah. Um, I think we each picked three. Yes. I have a couple other backups. Just I got to admit... Not a ton of games do this super well. Yeah, I agree. And I don't know why. Because it's a huge... I feel like it's a huge opportunity to do something. Right. Like, you should, you know? I know that some games do a good job, but... Yeah, I was thinking back to, like, what I usually do. And I... I it was, like, short... It was, like, kind of a shorter list than I thought, which was weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think we probably got some... Yeah, some, well, let's some just, shared things, but that's fine. I think there's one thing that we definitely have on our shared list. All right, well, number just... one, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Yeah, that's yes, what I have yes. to. Yeah. Um, we talked about this on our bonus Q&A last week. Yeah. Of like, is this a Christmas game? So it's set in New York during, like, Christ le leading up to like, Christmas. Between Christmas and Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving and Christmas, I think, right? No, it starts on, like, Christmas Eve. Oh, does it? Oh, okay. yeah. I thought it was Thanksgiving. Um, I wouldn't say this is a Christmas game. 
No. But it has a great sort of feel of Christmas to it. Yeah. And like the first 30 minutes of this game are really, really excellent. It's like yeah. Miles comes back and he comes back to his home. Right. And his mother's getting ready for like Christmas Eve. And he's like putting the records. Yeah, he's on. like he's like putting on nice music and yeah. like th their apartment looks so like, like cozy. Cozy and wonderful. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean a, a lot of the game and after that. His friend that. comes over right. to have Christmas Eve dinner with them. Right. It's right. like a very small gathering, so it feels very intimate. Yeah, even if you don't I mean if you're not gonna play the game, you could just watch that scene on YouTube. It's it's really it's nice. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, and that yeah. part when you when you are playing it is very like it's almost like a, one of those like you know cozy walking sim games. Because yeah, you don't yeah. do anything. You just right. you're literally like putting a record in the record player right. and then chatting. You do with get your to mom. choose the record, which I like. I did like yeah. choosing the yeah. record too. Yeah. Um, the rest of that game is more kind of actiony, but right. you still do see like decorations out and yeah. it, it's snowy you're going in New, New York, York. So yes. Yeah. It's like the, it's like the Die Hard conversation. Like, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? No, it's not. It's but not. it but it, it, takes place. it has a certain Christmas yeah. feel. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay. Uh, why don't, what, what's your next one? My next one, actually, I recently played this over the weekend. Oh. Was the it's the Pokemon Unite Winter Holiday Event? Oh, I didn't know they had a holiday event. Started on December first. Oh, tell me about it. They have a snowball fight one that's really cool. And of course, different costumes oh for gosh. your characters. I played this last year as well. Yeah. Again, I have to say that Pokemon Unite has been just like one of my top yeah. Pokemon games. It's great. Like I continue to just go back to it every once in a while just to play for 15, 10, 15 minutes. But it's awesome. Yeah. It's like super easy to pop back in. I love games that are like these long kinds kinds of games like Fortnite or right. Rocket League that have these holiday events. Yeah. Um, and this one is really, really cute. And uh, I really, you got to get Santa Pikachu and just get going, you know? Yeah. Like it's, it's, a, it's a thing to do, guys. That That is a whole other, cat, just just live service games that do holiday yeah, events. Yeah, totally. Overwatch, Fortnite, mm -hmm. Rocket League, add Pokemon Unite to yep. that. Like those are really fun. And they really do a good job of, of capturing the spirit and can feel really special for just because it yeah. lasts for just a couple weeks, these limited time events. Exactly. Um, so I really so, like that. I, I, like, I went back. This is like, honestly, the, like a lot of these games I won't even play for the rest of the year, but it's like, oh, I really like that. Yeah. Or you can get the some Rocket cool. The Rocket League one you went back to and played. I got really deep into Rocket that was League fun. one holiday season. Yeah. And I, I mean, Rocket League is super hard, it's but a good game, it was but it was really fun to do. The holiday one is fun, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So my... my um, my uh, advice is for everyone to go into Pokemon Unite and play the winter event because it's really cool. I'm kicking myself that I haven't already done that. You should do it now. I, I will. Immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Okay, what's next? What do you have next? Um, Kirby's Epic Yarn oh. on the Wii. So we did a video on Nintendo Minute that was mm -hmm. like winter themed levels. Oh, yeah. And we picked and played all of the games that had the levels. I had wanted to include Kirby's Epic Yarn, but we didn't have a good way to capture the Wii, the Wii. footage. That's right, I remember so that. So we had to leave it off the list, which really pained me. Oh, that's um, a good one. I haven't played that game in so long, I can't recall exactly Yeah, there's a whole like. world, Snowland, that okay. just has, it's really beautiful to see. The music is outstanding if you want to yeah. um, seek out the, the soundtrack for that. Um, obviously no official release for that, oh well. Yeah, that's um, too bad. But... There's kind of a couple levels that are strung together that are really, really nice. That's good. That's a good one. I love that game. I feel like that game is really underrated. That game's kind of underrated now. It's really underrated. It's a little bit forgotten, I feel. Yeah. It's too bad. Yeah, we should we should go back to that. I don't have They should re HD Kirby's <gasps> Epic Yarn. Just put it out. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. a good idea for Switch. Yes. Come on, Nintendo. Just do it. Just do it. Um, I have one that may be controversial. Oh, boy. Which is Super Mario Galaxy 2. Um, it's one of those games I feel like that doesn't have like... It does, that definitely has some snow-themed galaxies. Yeah. But there's something about the vibe of that game. I don't know if it's collecting the stars or like the... Sort of the, the colored... Like the colors that, look, that kind of remind me of like Christmas lights or whatever. Oh. That just gives me like a Christmas vibe. Okay. Um, so that's my pick. I, I really like, mm. I really like that playing that game. Well, now it's kind of hard to do that, but, um, I really liked playing yeah. that game over the holidays before I would revisit like some of the levels there because it just kind of felt 
festive to me. I don't know. Mm. But that's okay. on my list. Bit of a stretch. Controversial. But maybe someone else out there has um, also played this around so, the holiday time. Since we had some overlap, I'll do one more. And this is actually a game I've never played. But mm -hmm. I've always admired for the concept. Christmas Nights. So, yes, so I Nights saw that. is a game I haven't played. It's on it's on the Sega, uh, right? Sega Saturn. Yeah. I think it's been re-released a few times, but they did a Christmas, it's almost like a like a demo. Yeah. Like a Christmas themed demo for the game that I've heard about obviously for, for decades at this point. I'm just like, oh that's that's so great. I wish there were more things like this. Just yeah. like just like a small, a small little thing. Little self-contained yeah. um, Christmas themed game. Yeah. Um if there's any way to, I don't know, people maybe can let me know if there's any way to like play this in an easy modern way, way modern yeah. console. Um, I, I would love to, to check it out. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've been jealous of these uh, of the Saturn Christmas fans. Nights. The one, the one yeah. thing to be jealous of, yes. Yeah, I think the other, other couple of things that's kind of similar to the Pokemon Unite is Mario Kart tracks. Well, there's a new, there's, there's a great there's new a one. There's a new one. I think in it's called pack, yeah. uh, Mary Mountain. Right. So I'm excited about that. That's going to be like, wonderful. Always Mount Wario has like a snow uh, ski resort vibe to it, which is kind of like Christmas holiday. <sighs> that's my, that's, I mean, I'm really reaching now. And then there's also like Overcooked's Christmas DLC. You don't like that game. Oh, as they have much, Christmas DLC? But their Christmas DLC is so cool because you, you, you know, you make like holiday recipes, oh, but really? you also dress in holiday costumes. Oh, that's cute. It's I do really like that. really cute. And that's fun to play when you have friends over around yeah. the Christmas holiday. Right. I always bust that game out because it's always like something to do. Yeah. And since they have something festive, um, it's always nice to well, let's, go let's back. Let's aggravate my guests. That's a, that's a good thing to like, do. Maybe you'll get kicked out of the house. Maybe you won't. Depends on if you can make this hamburger or not. Oh, no. That's what it is. Yeah. Always fun. Well, there's some suggestions if you're looking to get in the mood. Yeah, tell us if you have Christmas games that you typically play around this time of year or theme games with Christmas themes that you play because I want to know if there's stuff that we've missed because I want to play them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, on to what we're playing. We've got a pretty big, chunky well, we got a big update list. on this, yeah. Big update. What's the big update? We both beat God of War, Oh, Brad yes, and Rock. right. Had you, not, had you not beaten it? By last episode? No. Oh, you were about I to. I was beat about it. to. Oh, okay. And then you Great. you beat it very recently. So we should talk about that. Yeah, um, as we've been doing it, like a little seven to ten minute spoiler watch here. Yes. We're, we're not gonna go into crazy details. No, but and we will not just, spoil Just some stuff. If you're anybody. if you're starting, if you haven't played the game yet. Right, right. Might want to look at here. Or if you haven't watched any trailers, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah. So we both finished mm -hmm. the game. I thought that overall it was fabulous, wonderful. It was really fun. I mean, the game is beautiful and I really had a great time like getting to know this entire cast of characters from Norse mythology. Yeah. I thought it was really cool how there was just like so much than so much more than just Atreus and Kratos in this game. And like it was cool. Like the ending, I know that they've said that this is sort of the end of the Norse mythology storyline. So they're going to be moving Kratos onto, or I don't know, maybe it's somebody else, yeah. onto um, something else. So it was interesting to see how they would like kind of wrap wrap this up, I guess. I was curious how they would do that. Um, I thought it was interesting that they chose this particular way to end the Norse myth mythology series. Um, I don't want to spoil well, it, but I, what do you I, think? I saw that going in as well, that announcement of like, yeah, we're done with this this chunk of, of storytelling. If I didn't know that, I would have thought based on how the game ends, like, oh, they're going to do another one of these right. with Kratos kind of in this new role. Yeah. It wasn't um, as definitive as I thought it would so, be for so I thought the that, ending. Right. So I thought that was an interesting statement for them to put out there because I'm not sure everybody would have come to that conclusion. Right. Um, the game does also like strongly hint that there could be like some sort of a side game with Atreus, or I don't know if they'll do DLC with Atreus, yeah. which makes sense story-wise. There's a lot that he can look at. I don't know how much I want to play that, though. Yeah, the game definitely, I mean, you're playing almost 50% of the game as Atreus, yeah. which was really something unexpected for me. Um, I didn't really love it in the beginning because I, I just like Kratos and right, playing right. as Kratos and feeling Kratos, you know, his Yeah, power. I mean, Kratos is a great character. He's a great character. You, um, you go to these games to play as that character. Right. So it was a little bit of like a, 
bait and switch almost that like oh wait i'm playing like almost like a metal half. gear solid 2 yeah thing yeah <laughs> exactly like i'm playing you know more more than half this game or at least half this game with yeah. this other character that i kind of didn't sign up to play as um towards the middle of the game i definitely liked it more like i kind of got the feel of playing as atreus yes yeah playing as atreus a little bit more like i understood like how to play as atreus mm. a little bit more button but, mash huh more button mashing more but no i was not button mashing you though you said you were button mashing a lot which i i was a little bit more um like. i got i got I, I also about halfway i sort of slowed down and especially with kratos i i did end up using all the weapons me too fairly equally which was not the case in the first game. I really yeah. preferred the axe. Yes. But I came to see the benefits a little bit better. Yeah. In the, this the, game. The weapons and the different like sort of uses for each of the weapons, both Atre uh, uh, Atreus and Kratos, I think was well done. Yeah. Like you needed to use certain types of arrows for certain things. You needed to like. Oh, I thought they could have. I, I thought they could have just had one type of arrow. Oh, really? I, yeah. I that know. that felt. A bit. There are some things in this game that feel like overkill. Like the all of the whole the skill tree plus mm. the like boosting your equipment never felt as well done as I thought it could have been or or, or has yeah. been done in other games. That's one of the small dings. Yeah. I would put on this game where that always felt like busy work and a little bit confusing. And I'm like, I guess I'm just going to keep powering this up. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't mind it. I thought that I really, again, I'm not very good at these kinds of things. Like I don't strategically think through like, oh, I'm going to upgrade this particular armor to right. really like overpower the stat or whatever. Or this game also has what uh, something that was a peeve of mine in something like Twilight Princess, where it's like, oh, there's these treasure chests, and these, tre these treasure chests look super cool, and you open it up, and it's just money. Uh, and there's never, like, anything that exciting that you get. So you it's the money. It, it's like, yes, you need money, but it felt like kind of overplaying it. Especially to, when they're, like, gigantic. These gigantic, elaborate treasure chests yeah. that are, it's like... Oh. Yeah. I, I only cared about making Kratos look as cool as possible. Yeah. So, like, I just always picked the armor that was, like, right. the most cool looking. Uh, ultimately, it didn't feel like it mattered in the end. Exactly. It was like, there's some small variations, but it's mostly aesthetic. And you always had to match. Like, you got to get the right. chest, waist, you need the and set. The arm yeah. set to, like, look matchy. Right, right. Like, you can't have one or the other. That'd be weird. Exactly. Um. Yeah. But uh, I thought, again, I thought, like some of the you know different things that they did with the different side characters was really clever um it really like helped to build out this world so much more and like yeah. introduce you to like all these different characters and yeah how they fit into the story um so that was that was pretty cool you know yeah story-wise this game is like i think a masterpiece i think for yeah. kind of storytelling um and yeah, all the characters that they introduced were very interesting, very compelling. The game gives you a really strong push after you finish it to, to do, do this, the all the post-game stuff and side quests. And I've been looking at what that is because I may not do it. And some of it is important and meaningful. Yeah. And I do, I do kind of want to spend a little bit of time in a more relaxed fashion exploring. Um, yeah. But I do, I do want to play some other stuff right now, so I'm, I, I have to save it for later. I'm gonna save it for like maybe in a month or so. Yeah, go back and do some of the side stuff. I did, there is there is some like pretty significant post game missions, right? That seem like you might want to know the ending of that story, right? <laughs> because they don't tell you what the ending is in in the sort of the main game um, for certain characters and what their paths will lead to. So that that's gonna be kind of cool to find out. But, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I thought it, overall it was really awesome. I really loved it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, gosh, this game is like, it's just, it's, sometimes I look at Kratos' face in those close-ups. It's like unbelievable. Like how can they do that now? It just looks so, like every pore, like his the movements in his face right. is just so incredible. Like I can't, I can't believe that you can do that with a video game now. Yeah. It's so cool. You should watch that video I was telling you about where they interviewed all the people who played Kratos in the different languages. Cause you get a lot of, of seeing them in the mocap sessions. Yeah. Like they're doing, they're acting out all of these roles. Yeah, yeah totally. So it, it is like really, really legit acting. It's not just somebody in a sound booth. Like they're yeah. acting it all out. 
And um, they have all these great, like, really quiet moments. Yeah, with Kratos by himself. Almost I mean, like they, a soliloquy kind of thing. Over two games, they really reset the character of Kratos, where he's really completely like different from what he was. Yeah. In the original games, where he he's has, a huge jerk. He has so much depth now, and right. so much like duality in his character, yeah. which what didn't exist before. Before he was just like a killer, you know. Right. Which is fine. I, I he's like, like that. Oh, oh, he's mad again. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that too. You yeah. Know, I'm okay with both. But I, I just, it's incredible to me how much they've reshaped Kratos' character and just visually too, the way that they've, they had those really like, just sort of like Kratos, there's no background, just him with, with like really cool lighting as he like struggles with his inner yeah. demons and stuff. And you're just like, this is a ma- this is cl- like seriously a masterpiece. Like this is right. incredibly done, right. you know, right. it's so impressive. I have been thinking though, like I, you know, because we got game of the year right around the corner. I'm really struggling with where this game goes. Yeah. A lot of games, I have just a gut feeling of like, oh, I, I know exactly, generally yeah. where this is going to go. This this game, I really don't. So yeah. I do need to sit need down to think about <clears throat> over the next week and look at my list and see yeah. where it makes sense. I think this is going to be a really fun game of the year discussion for us because in the past when we've done this before, we've only had to contend with Nintendo games. Right. And now it's sort of like the huge world, wild, wild, wide world of yeah. video games is open to us. So it makes it harder for me to place things now in in sort of the rankings for game of the year. So I do also need to think a little bit deeper about sit with the experience a yeah. little bit more. But, yeah. Oh yeah. I, I mean, every night I could not wait to go back and I mean, right. to play this game. I, I had that the sparkle feeling, as I say, like every, I was thinking about it all the time. Mm. You know, I was watching these Norse mythology videos and reading books and yeah, yeah, it it like totally captured me. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, We, moving on from God of War, we finally got our play dates. We unboxed it. Check out the video of that. And we've been playing kind of the initial game. Oh my gosh. So cute. So the way the play date works is when you buy it, you automatically receive on a set schedule different games at different times. Right. And I think we were supposed to be on their like accelerated schedule. I'm not sure it's working yet. Uh, have you gotten more games? No, I've had, I have I have the three games that you've Yeah, they said had. they were still working out some of the kinks on that. So right now we have the two games that everybody gets initially, mm-hmm. Whitewater, Wipeout, Casual Birder, and, and then, then they also helped us get this other game which is not part of their official role. I don't know how this works. They're like, you can sideload these games. Um, I don't know exactly what that means yeah. or if those are event- is it like a way to preview a game that's going to eventually be out. I know you can also make games and release them on your own. Right. But in this case, Playdate was like encouraging us, like you should play this. Right, right. So exactly. they helped us get that, this game Bloom. Yeah, which was a game that a lot of people told me that I should play. That game, yeah, yeah. I was uh, that game was on my eye beforehand. What are your What are your thoughts on just the hardware before we get into the games? I think the hardware is so cute. Yeah, like it is perfectly just. It it's like perfect for what it is. You know, it's like this little handheld. You, you just want to like throw it in your purse. It's very like, like it has like a cool like I don't know like chic factor to it well, it almost. looks like a delicious piece of american cheese <laughs> the color, bite into it Arr! yeah there's something about the form factor the color yeah. the way that everything feels like it's very high quality you know and it just it, it it just feels cool like you're like a cool you're like the cool kid that has this, right this cool new thing you know it does take me back to the simpler days of handheld gaming when there were like real limitations yeah and the de- designers had to work around those and could do some amazing things. Yeah. Whereas like, now it's the Switch. It's like, well, it's just a console. It's just a console, right? So, you know, it's a black and white screen. It's not mm-hmm. backlit. Right. Um, and you only got two buttons with it, mm-hmm. and the crank too, of course. Yeah, you have two buttons, the D-pad, um, obviously. The crank, I mean, the crank is kind of the, the calling card of the system. Yeah. I haven't found it to be like the end all be all thing. I haven't either. Which I think is good. Yeah, you don't want it to become too gimmicky. Right. Where like it's kind of like the Wii U situation where like, oh, every game has to have some like gamepad compatibility. Yeah. You don't want the developers to feel like you're backing them into a corner and like every game must have some exactly. like, philosophical way of why you're using the crank. Like the, the game's integrated, but I don't think it's like annoying. Yeah. Like yeah. That, which is good. Um, the interface is really good, really cute. It's got a lot of yeah. personality to it. Definitely it definitely has a lot of personality um, to it. And you can look, I mean, you can do a lot with it. Like I was really surprised when they were like, oh, you're gonna have to side, side load this game. I thought, oh, well this is gonna suck. It was pretty easy. But it was super easy. Yeah. 
Like yeah. what you did was like you downloaded a file, you uploaded it to your account on the web, and mm -hmm. then it would beam it to your system. Right. You basically register your system. Right. When you first do a startup for it and they walk you through it pretty easily as yeah. well. And then it's linked to your account on the web. So yeah. I think it's clever the way they did it. And I, I love the personality about it too. It's one of those things where it's like, we were talking in our bonus Q&A about Tamagotchi. Yeah. It's like you... <laughs> Stay with me on this conversation here. Playdate Tamagotchi? Oh my gosh. That I would, could be cool. I would play that. I would crank that yeah. little thing, like feed the little, oh my God, how cute. Just do that. Um, but the reason why I feel like when I was, when I had a Tamagotchi, why it was so cool was because it felt alive to me. And this Playdate kind of has that sense. Like it feels like a little, it feels like it's, a, it's like a little, like little robot. You know, it has a, yeah. has personality. Yeah. Like it's little eyes right. blink when you, you know, when you put it to sleep or like, yeah. There's little things about it that makes it feel very like sentient, I guess. Which oh is weird. wow! It's like I feel like it's like a little it, I don't know, it's like a little creature. It is you know? truly handheld in a way that again, handheld systems have not been for a long time. Yeah, it's so thin too. It's so teeny. Like even I like like wearing these pants. Like I could fit it into the pocket, the pocket yeah, of the which, sure. which is nice. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll do that at the game awards. You play Playdate while you're... I'm going to be cranking away while they're giving the game of the year. <laughs> while you're like waiting for... Yeah, it's like everybody sit down and be quiet. I'm cranking premieres. here. <laughs> I'm cranking here. I'm cranking. <laughs> the little crank is cute. Yeah. It's like a little magnet. You know, it feels good. Like yeah. the things feel good. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I applaud them. I mean, making hardware is not easy. Yeah. I think they learned that the hard way with all of their, you know, unfortunate delays that they've yeah. had. But the end result is really, really good. I, I, I totally agree. I mean, I waited again mo multiple years <laughs> yeah. to get this thing. Um, I don't mind. You know, I wanted it. I think it's a cool, yeah, it's like a, it harkens back to like the the nostalgic days of a Game Boy or, or you know, a, a yeah. proper handheld. Um, and I think they delivered on that. Yeah, the, the wait is long, but I, I think it's worth it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I played that casual birder game a lot. Did you beat it? No. Oh. I, so I like this concept of like being, maybe I should become like a real bird watcher or something. Yeah. <laughs> because I really like it. Cause we played that game on Switch over the summer, Alba. Remember that mm. game, Alba? Love so that this, game. This game, um, Casual Birder is kind of similar. Yeah. Where you're, you're kind of going around, you're new to town, you know, you're going around like taking photographs of birds yeah. and filling out your album. It felt kind of like Pokemon with bird catching. Exactly. Or like Pokemon Snap kind of thing. But the, but it is like you're walking around a town, like you're a little guy yeah. going around. And then the, the little camera um, functionality with the crank is that you would focus right. with the crank, which feels good. That was a good, that's a good use of the crank. I think yeah. it makes it feel feel very like tactile, like a real camera. Yeah. Like, I know you aren't, you aren't doing it with like a real cranking, a real yeah. camera, but like you know, messing with the lenses of a real camera is mm -hmm. kind of like that same feeling. So I thought that was very, very well done. Very right, clever. right. That. Yeah. Yeah, I've been dabbling in all three games. Whitewater Wipeout is a surfing game. Yeah. Where you're, it's, I think it's strictly the crank and you're using that to change the angle, the angle. of your surfing to right, keep right. it going. And it's basically like a high score kind of game. Yeah. Very simple, but I think a good initial game just to show people how that works. Mm -hmm. Um, casual birder and bloom I've been playing bloom is kind of like it's like a little RPG where you're raising and selling plants, plants yeah and it seems very story um, oriented as well where you're it's, it's again using that great new mechanism of just getting text messages and that's mm -hmm. how most of the story it. happens yeah um, uh, one small thing I will say one small critique of casual birder and bloom these games are really pushing I mean, the screen The screen is not big. No. Like, there's, at times, a bit too much detail. Yeah. And it's like, you really need to, so like, like, I'm like, what am what I am looking, I looking at? at? Yeah. Right. So I think I think designers will need to keep tweaking, like, what is the right, like, scope of a visual. Yeah. So that you, you can make it out. You don't want to it. I think you don't want to overcomplicate it so that right. it's, like, you're doing trying to do too much. I mean, the, I mean the, the level of detail you can get is really high. The pixels yeah. are, are small. But you don't, on that size of a screen, you can kind of overdo it. Right. It, it gets a little bit like your eyes start to like cloud a little bit. Yeah. Because it's like, like a little much. Yeah. But I'm, um, I'm sure, it's I'm sure they figure it out. So you have to like play it you do need in light. good lights. Yeah. 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 No worm light for the play date yet. I know. Yet. Oh, that yet. would be good. Because I, I do want to, I do like playing this game and playing like, like any of the handheld stuff yeah. in bed. So you do need good light though for right. that. Because not right. as 
not as easy in bed. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, casual birder and bloom, I'm, I'm really enjoying. Also, yeah. I guess it's a new week for us, so maybe we'll be getting two new games. <gasps> I think in the next wave is this game from Keita Takahashi who did Katamari. I want to play that one. Which is the one I am looking forward yeah. to the most. I'll, I will play anything that you he can does. Roll it with a crank. Uh, I can't wait. Roll it. So that, that, yeah, that's a really fun yeah, thing for us artist. to come. He is a true artist. True artist, yeah. 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 Um, awesome. So, yeah, very much enjoying that. Curious to see if anybody else has a play date and what they think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you. Oh my gosh. Well, I briefly. Uh, Pentiment. I am so into Pentiment. You're not. Uh, I'm not, but it's okay. It's okay. It's not your type of game. It's not, it's not, not uh, it's just, I I really admire this game. It is just not for me. And it's okay to say that. It is. Not, it's not, you know, I I think you should play what you want to play. Right. Um, but this game, I started playing right after beating God of War and could not be a more perfect palate cleanser from like, axing people like axing you know norse mythology creatures to death um as this could not be more different so i think many people are probably familiar with this already but it was um shown in like the xbox summer showcase and i yeah. had my eye on it for a long time it's on game pass um but such a cool concept basically all the whole game is done in this like sort of illustrated illuminated, illuminated manuscript, manuscript yeah. style um and, and the the story is also about a guy that illuminates manu he's like an artist that illuminates manuscripts yeah. um it's a, a very story driven game um but what i didn't expect was for it to be like a murder mystery ah. um so it, it has this sort of like uh ace attorney kind of feel to it where you're really immersed in this really interesting environment you're meeting a lot of really uh, great characters, mm-hmm. um, and you're trying to unravel this mystery of what is happening. Um, and th- there's like lots of, you know, clue finding and and putting conversations with people together into like formulating what you think a hypothesis is to, as to what happened. Um, I just finished sort of like the big first two acts, and I'm on to the next part of the game. Um, I was I was I was actually a little bit surprised because I thought that the first, like this first mystery was going to like span a longer stretch of time, but no, I I like, I was forced to tell them what I thought, and then it resulted in something. I was like, oh, okay, and then it was like seven years later. I was like, oh, I guess we're moving on <laughs> from yeah. this. Um, but it's 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 really beautiful to look at, and the way that they've done, you know, sort of the the visuals and the text different fonts that are very like recognizable for those kinds of manuscripts or illuminated text in the in history um the and we should say for people who don't oh. recall you are literally a history I major am. yes in i majored in european history in college so wow. this is like right up such a useless degree guys <laughs> This is right up my alley, though, because I remember studying. I was also an you art, are the target audience. I was also an art history minor, so that's Ugh. again another useless degree. Don't get that degree. Um, but I definitely was like I remember seeing these exact like drawings in yeah. real life in some of the classes that I took, and like it has historical context as well. Like it, it talks about like Martin Luther, who you know was part of this yeah. uh, this times right. history. So, it, it seems meticulously researched. Oh, like I only played the first hour. Amazing. And like I was, I was, and it has a glossary of like you can look up yeah, these you terms. Can look up everything. I learned a lot. Yes, yes, you can look up all the different. The vespers. Characters. I had to look up. Oh, what the is, vespers. What are the yes, vespers? The vespers. Um, and the other cool thing about it is you do get to choose like your character's background, which I yes. thought was really fun. So like they give you some options. Like, do you want him to be of like Italian descent? I did that as well. I and was, then, I like, was an Italian hedonist. Oh, me too. Oh, great. <laughs> I wanted to... Uh, the, okay, yeah. The whole pin on the hedonist part. But um, you get to pick the background and it like gives you more dialogue choices of like stuff that you can say to people. Yeah. And it, you can uncover more things based on what you chose for like your profession and like what you studied in university and uh-huh. like, where you're from. But I definitely picked the hedonist because this game is scandalous. As it as it was back in the 1500s in medieval Europe some or whatever. Late night visits to the graveyard. There are some there's some hanky panky in the library with some nuns. Nuns. Oh, oh no. Ooh-wee. It's like it's very spicy. 
It's very okay. good. It's very good. Very Hedonism good. was on in whatever year, oh. wherever this was. You better believe this it. Germ- is it Germany? Yes. Yeah. They're like, it's it's Bavaria. Okay. But you actually, it's like closer to Austria because they're like near Innsbruck, which is a town in Austria, and Salzburg, which is also a town in Austria now. So. All right, Egghead. <laughs> I've been to both those places and they're really, really beautiful. Laying it on thick you should now. definitely go to yeah. Innsbruck and, and Salzburg if you have not. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, I really, I really like it. I'm going to keep playing. It's I'm very so happy good. to see you getting so into this. For me, it, it, I, I, games like Ace Attorney just don't click with me. I know. There's yeah. also a lot of just like text dumps. Yep. That I was like, eh, this is maybe a tiny bit too slowly it's like reading a book. delivered for me. Yeah. So, again, it's okay. It's on Game Pass. It. I, I'm glad that this game is on Game Pass because it's easy for people to check out a game they, they might not otherwise. Yeah. Um, check it out. Super happy it exists. It's really creative. Looks great. Yeah. Um, really applaud um, Xbox for... Going through with a game like this. Can you say like, really who, amazing. What's, the, what's the audience for this? I don't know, five people, including you? Me, it's yeah. me. Um, you and some dusty old professors, I don't know. I love it. Let's all gather up and talk about <laughs> Pentiment. <laughs> have, a, have, a, have a philosopher's yeah. round table Great. on this. Great, Yeah. They, they also give you these cool achievements. It's like 5% of people have done this. Oh, yeah. The, the dirty stuff is it's <sighs> hard, to, hard to do. <laughs> so I uh, closed yeah, Pentiment stuff. and I booted up Vampire Survivors. Yes, could, also on Game Pass. <clears throat> yes, could not be more different. These were the two games that I wanted to try after yeah, I beat yeah. God of War. So I did this in, in one night. Um, this is a game, as I've told you, defies description. Yeah. Defies categorization. I can't wait for you to I'm just going to try. I'm just going to very this. plainly explain what you do in this game. Okay. So it's a top-down game, very simple graphics, mm-hmm. like kind of like... SNES level graphics. Okay. You choose a character to play as. Very mm. Castlevania esque. Like, like this is a this is a buff guy with a whip. Okay. And you are moving around on this um, very large field as waves of enemies come at you. Now this is where I got confused. All you are doing is moving around. You did you do not press a button to attack. It's an auto attack. Everything is done automatically. Okay. You get, as you attack enemies, you get experience and you level up mm-hmm. and you can choose from a range of randomly chosen different perks that you can choose from. There are a lot of these. Some okay. of them include different weapons, powering up the weapons you have, um, giving you more armor, giving you more speed. Um, and as time goes on, you get more powerful, but there's also just more and more waves of enemies coming okay. at you. And I, like, I really mean waves. It's, it's got like a feel of like, you know, like a shoot 'em up, like arcade game where mm-hmm. it's like the, the screen is just like full. Or like castle defenders. Right. And you need yeah. to find like the path to get out of this. And I was like, well, I have this weapon, so I think I can clear out this path and get out safely oh. before I get overwhelmed. Like that that's that's an easy way to die in this game. Like you might be thinking I'm doing great and then just, they converge on you and your health bar just goes. And then when you when you do die, do you so start over? You would you do need to start over. There are some permanent perks that you can buy for your character though with the money that you oh. got. So you do start out a little bit stronger. So it's got the feel like something like a Dead Cells. Okay. Or like uh, Hades. Right. Where there is some aspect of permanent like growth. Carry over. Yeah. But there are so many different modifiers of, again, of these weapons or attributes. Every run does feel really different. Okay. And that's part of the fun. Um, and I guess that, that's what makes it feel addictive. This game like, is. One cr- more time. This game yeah. is dangerously addictive. Um, Uh-oh. so I, like, I had one run where I got this power up garlic, which basically gives you an area of effect uh-huh. where anybody, like anybody takes damage who gets close to you. And some of these enemies that I was trying to like, you know, whittle down, like I could just walk through a path. Is it like mow them permanent down. garlic or is it on a timer? I guess no, the whole, for the, for the whole run you have oh, this garlic wow. and I could power up the garlic and eventually, <laughs> eventually the garlic could not keep up with how powerful the enemies were. Okay. But that was really fun for a while. I was just walking through these waves of enemies. And they were just enemies. like totally yes. passing out. And, I, and I was leveling up super fast. I was like, yes, this is great. So, oh. I mean, I've, I've done, I've played, I've played quite a bit and every run is completely different. Okay. And there are different characters that you can get and unlock. Is there a multiplayer? No. Okay. Um, it's just such a unique experience. Again, all you're doing is moving around. 
There's no buttons. That's so <clears throat> interesting that you don't even attack. Right. I don't know how people found this game. Like, I, I looked it up. It's, it seems to be one of these games that's made by, like, a guy. Um, oh. And again, the presentation is super simple, and it's it's kind of ripping off Castlevania in a lot of ways. <laughs> um, but I'm glad that people found it. I'm glad that it stands out. It's going to be a great shadow drop on the Switch when they do their next indie direct, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure um, it's going to be a shadow it, drop. It makes, it makes perfect sense um, to get this game out as, as wide as, as they yeah, can. Yeah, it seems sort of like such a basic concept, but is like very right. much your like human brain just like wants right, to do right. it over and over again. Yeah, but yeah. I went, I, like, I, I flipped from like the, in the first like five minutes, I was like, what is this game? This seems weird. To like understanding it fully and, and then, and then, and then like to it? a minute after that, I was like, I'm going to be up all night playing this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess on Game Pass, it's Quiet on, it's, it, it's been on PC for a little while now. Yeah. Um, I, I recommend it. it looks like it's it very fun. fun. You have not tried this yet. I have not tried this yet. Are I mean, you going to? Yes. Or are you frightened of the addiction? I'm very easily addicted, oh, as boy. you know. Oh, I'm boy. still horribly addicted to Marvel Snap. Horribly. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Like, I can barely, like, get through the day without playing at least, like, five times a day. So, <sighs> I need to, yeah, one addiction at a time, people. All right. All right. Yeah. I'm going to finish Pentamin first. How long is that? I don't know. Okay. Seven years later. I don't know, I don't know right. how many acts All right. are in this game, but... I am. I'm into it. I am trying to see if there's any other just stuff I need to experience before we do this game of the year. I'm worried that I didn't play Triangle Strategy. Oh, that's the one. I could play the demo maybe oh. before until we do that. I mean, it's not enough to to say like, oh, this was this was the game of the year. Yeah, sorry, Roger. Well, we're gonna see Roger. He can he can Give us talk DL. our ear off about yeah. Triangle Strategy. Yeah. Um, but I feel like we did pretty good this year. I played a lot of games this year. I'm really yeah. proud of myself. Yeah, I think we did well. I played and beat more games than I've ever. Really? Well, I didn't leave the house this year. So <laughs> when you stay at home all day. I guess there, there was no yeah. like Animal Crossing. Like you're constantly playing this game for months at a time. Yeah, the only one that was that came close was Elden Ring. That was a longer ish yeah. one. There was, yeah, it was kind of this, this run on these big open world games. Yeah, was but I did the it. Theme. I played Elden Ring. I beat, I beat Elden Ring, Xenoblade, Horizon, God of War, yeah. Pokemon, um, Stray. Yeah. Like I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of myself. Did yeah. good, people. Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah, it's great. All right. All right. Should we move on to the news? We should. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll, let's start with this um, <sighs> nonsense that we hinted at at the top about Nintendo and the, the Smash competitive community. Yeah. So this has been going on for about a week now. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where I, I, I literally can't recap every single thing that has happened. Yes, there's multiple statements out that you guys should read. That are really interested. long and really detailed. Yeah. And it's a lot of history and a lot it's of... It's a lot of finger pointing back mm -hmm. in, like, multiple rounds of finger pointing. Oh, yeah. But we'll just go through kind of the high points of what yes. happened. Yes, yes, okay. So it was announced that the Smash World Tour event was going to be canceled at the last minute. And they put out a very lengthy statement about this. And they suggested that one of the big reasons was because of Nintendo and their partner, Panda. Remember, Nintendo partnered with Panda... I guess, was that last year? Or, yeah, it was like earlier? late last year. Whenever, like recently. Yeah. And Panda was going to be the official <laughs> yes, exactly. um, company to execute these competitive events. Competitive events. Yeah. Finally. That was like the big, yeah. like, ultimate goal for Nintendo. After all of the hand Nintendo. ringing for like years, right. that was going to be the thing. Right. So they it, were. This happened right as I was leaving Nintendo. This right. Partnership so they were before. crying foul play, saying Nintendo and Panda were kind of having a hand in this. Yeah. Um, Nintendo denied this. They put out a, they put out a, a statement, which was relatively brief, and they were just like, "No, this is not right." But then Smash World Tour came back and said, "Nope, everything we said, we stand by that. We do not, we do not co-sign what Nintendo just said." Right. Interesting. Um, Nintendo puts out another statement. Longer a, this a time. A very long statement. Which is very unlike Nintendo, by the right. way. This, this like rambly statement, I was like, who wrote it? It was rambly. At they, Nintendo. They started to get into confused. some of the reasons why they were not down with the Smash World Tour. They were talking about the health and safety of the players, which whatever. Which totally seemed like a scapegoat to me. What does that mean? I don't know. And it ends with this line saying we care we care about the smash community whenever anyone says it's that, it's always good it's a cop out. when you need to remind remind somebody of that yeah, yeah, care i about care you. about you don't you know that this is I deeply all care the, about the jerkish you. things that i'm doing right. is because i care right so you can't be mad at me 
<laughs> yeah, God. that's a red flag when somebody says, red has flag. to remind you that they care. Exactly. Um, Smash World Tour, they continue to clap back. They continue to counter. They, they they just anytime Nintendo had a statement, they just They're come out like, and be no, like, "No, that's actually wrong." Read our initial statement. We stand by this every time. Yeah. So yeah. they feel strongly about them being right about that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they were saying was that at Panda, their CEO, Doctor Allen, Doctor, Doc, the good, the doctor, good doctor, maybe the not so good doctor, <laughs> had been kind of like mucking things up, of like talking to all these other tournaments, like trying to shut them down, trying, yeah. like doing some real shady stuff. Some behind the <laughs> scenes shadiness. Right. Yeah. So then Panda puts out a statement where they do admit that Dr. Allen may have had some wrongdoing. Right. In and then, communicating with some of these um, other organizations. Yeah. And then the doctor and then there resigns. Was, and then last, last night, Dr. Allen out as CEO um, and meanwhile, they've had a lot of departures from the Panda team. They like really they've been kind have. of decimated. Yeah, they were like bleeding people for a and while. They, and they were they were on the receiving end of some nasty stuff, which was unfortunate. And yeah. the Panda Cup finale has been postponed um, due to safety reasons, they say. Uh, it seems like there may not be people there to operate the darn thing. Exactly. Um, yeah. So we're recording this on Monday. Who knows what will happen? Drama might continue Who knows what drama will happen? Unfold. Um, but I mean, this is really a worst case scenario for Nintendo. Yeah, exactly. So let's back up a little bit and talk about Nintendo's competitive play stuff. Which is over a decade in the running at this point. Exactly. And something that I was there when they formed this team right. and it this, struggled. Well, this really properly started, I would say, with the E3 where they had the, the actual, actual players come yeah. in to play Smash for Wii U. Right. I was part of the, the group that made the phone calls to those players. Right. And those players were so overjoyed that Nintendo was finally, finally recognizing them. getting involved, recognizing yeah. them, going to hopefully be this kind of guiding force for the community right. going forward. Again, 10 years ago. Yeah. Where are we now? Nowhere. Nowhere. And maybe in a worse place than before. <laughs> yes. So then, that was 10 years ago. And with the Smash game on Switch, Ultimate, all of this, like, Nintendo getting involved, Nintendo being, like, mother hen to the Smash community sort of got re resurfaced. Yeah. And this was, like, the big thing that happened when I was working on Smash Ultimate. And there was a whole department that, like, formed because this, of this. This was kind of part, you know, when Reggie was leaving, he did start up a number of initiatives. Yeah. Uh, or gave the blessing to a number of initiatives um, that obviously were meant to continue on after he left. I was the beneficiary of one of those. Original content was one yeah. of one of the things that right. he gave the thumbs up to. Competitive play was another one of those things. Right. Um, so that did not exist, um, obviously, 10 years ago when this started, but it does right. now. It does now. And that that's sort of like the the point of this team for existing right. is to like drive these conversations, form these partnerships with the Smash community, and then try to like legitimize some of this stuff. Right. But it was nearly impossible, I think, to do that within Nintendo. Well, the problem is once you are officially in this community, you feel more obligated to act on these things that you don't like that otherwise you could just turn a blind eye to. Right. Exactly. So like all these tournaments that were running modded software had to go after them. Yeah, the Project M stuff had it. Right. That whole thing right. was a huge so, lift. So on one hand, they're trying to, you know, do, find a partner like Panda to do their official tournaments. But on the other hand, they're spending all this time doing legal stuff, cease and desist, See, with like every other tournament. That's the thing. The legal stuff buried them. Right. Completely. We worked on so many... Like, not just the legal stuff with the cease and desist, because there was plenty of those, but also the legal stuff with the IP stuff, yes. which was in Nintendo's statement for this thing, um, for this Smash World Tour event, where in the same breath of saying, I care about the players and I care about your health and safety was, we care about our IP. Right. Which is actually the real reason, yeah. people. Like, yeah. let's not sugarcoat it by saying that, you know, we really care about this right. community. No. They want to protect the Nintendo yeah. IP. And the, part, the, the reason for partnering with these like, you know, other um, groups like Panda or whatever was to, like, call down on the amount of people that are using Nintendo's IP without their approval. Right. And every time, 
you know, the, you could count on this happening like twice a year oh, of yeah. some big tournament getting shut down. Yeah. And those were some of the worst PR moments like we would have all yeah. year long. And, you know, our team would get called in to clean it up. It was terrible. And like it was really damaging for like people who were on our team who really believed in the yeah. Smash community, wanted there to be some way for Nintendo to be this guiding light. Like people were really shook over this stuff. Yeah, we launched um, Nintendo Versus, which is like yeah. a Twitter account, really supposed supposed to be like a way to communicate and like sort of have like a place where the community can go um, as part of like Ultimate. And we had all these marketing initiatives and these things that we wanted to do for Smash Ultimate because that game was not only did we work on the launch, but the two year mm -hmm. like fighter packs afterwards. So there was a lot that we were doing in the community, but every single time we did anything, it was really dampened by all of these legal things that we had right. to deal with. So it was sort of like one step forward, like three steps back, you know? Right, right. And it was, it, it feels terrible. So we were for, digging a hole in yeah. real time, right. which just made the bar for anything that Nintendo eventually did so high. Obviously the reaction to Panda was a little bit muted because it was like at this point, can it's you like, believe any of it? Wow, you yeah. basically torched this community so that you could do this little tournament. Like, who cares? Right. And obviously, you know, we've this has been like the, one of the themes of this podcast. Like, Nintendo wants control. But in this case, they have met something they cannot control. Exactly. This community cannot be controlled. Because there's no governing body. There's no big corporate overlord. It's like... Right. It's, it's all like, like grassroots stuff. When Nintendo needs to shut down... All these soundtracks on YouTube, they talk to YouTube, and YouTube deals with it. In this yeah. case, what are you going to do? There's nobody you can talk There's to. There's nobody. The doctor has resigned. The There's good no doctor is gone. <laughs> There's no one you can and talk to. in this case, like, I really do assign, it's like, who's the blame game? I blame everybody involved. It's like, I blame Nintendo for being overreaching and for, you know, yeah. again, wanting to, to, like, literally, like, mother hen every single detail right. of this. But at the same time... There's a lot of bad actors in the Smash community. There is. It doesn't do themselves any favors. They've proven to be incredibly immature. Yeah. And like we've dealt with these scandals. It's embarrassing. It's really bad. Right. Yeah. So they really do need like an adult <laughs> to like this is why I'm like I'm like is Sony doing the right thing with Evo? Like are they are they doing that right? Um I, I mean, it might be too early to say. I mean, they haven't had these issues, but they also don't have a game like Smash. Right. That, they're they're, that they're kind of putting this, they're kind of putting this on for their third parties. Whereas Nintendo, it's like we have the game. Yeah. So we need to be super involved in this. But we've seen like the players, they've had issues. Yeah. The tournament organizers, they've, they've had, had issues. issues. The doctor, he's got issues. <laughs> the so, doctor. So it's like <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to approach this from a super professional place, which is Nintendo. But you're dealing with a bunch of children. Yeah. So it's like, this is just not going to work it's out. It's not going to work. You're, you're sort of like, and the more I think Nintendo tries to, it's like when your mom tells you you can't do something. Right. They're going to want to do it. Yeah. So you're like, you're making it worse. Right. Really. From a Nintendo perspective, like the, the more you, you know, say, go your room to the Smash community, the right. more they're going to sneak out of the house. Yeah, like if, they're not going to want to do it. If all you're doing is disciplining somebody, there's going to be some retrib like, retribution to yeah, that. Yeah, they're going to revolt back. Right. If you, you know? if you just have a, such a one-sided relationship, where if, like, I was just, if I was just saying to you, like, oh, you're so dumb, you're doing the wrong thing, yeah. like, do it this way. Like, like, at some point, I'm just going to be like... You would hate me. Stop. Like, I right. don't want to have this relationship with you anymore. So, like, you know, you know I, I really have a lot of love for the people at Nintendo who are working on this stuff. I'm not... I'm not saying this to be like mean or spiteful or anything, but I think it's time to stop. I really think it's, 10 years. I think it's time to stop. And I don't think holding on is going to improve anything. Like you're just wasting your time. Right. Because you know, this thing that you, that you spent 10 years trying to make happen, this Panda tournament, it's in shambles. Yeah. So what do you do next? If I was Doug Bowser, I would really be asking like, what are you what, supposed to do? What, what do we do now? And how, like, is there any path where we can make this a positive? And maybe the, the answer is no. The answer is no. You know, just stop. Yeah. yeah. Like, what's the point? Move on to something that you can do. Right. But again, I think they're so like hard headed. Yeah. They're not going to. And, and at a minimum, they're going to feel like, well, we need to police our IP. Oh, they're definitely going to police. So even IP. if we're not doing a tournament, yeah. now they're in it and they're just doing all the cease and desist, which is a terrible place to be. What is the benefit? They're just going to piss off people.
people more. And it's going to be such it's endless. a strain on that team, too. Just yeah. To forever do season. And the it's just team. a quagmire. Oh, my gosh. I'm, Hire some more lawyers. That's all, all. I guess that's what you could do. All lawyers. The competitive team, all lawyers from oh now on. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's a huge mess now. Like, a, it's a disaster at yeah. this point. Like, you you can walk away from the car crash or you can yeah. you know so i don't i don't know how they find the motivation to keep doing this yeah um i certainly didn't have it when i was there my gosh this would happen every 3 months yeah i mean it started with the good with the right intentions yeah but it just has not gone that way no. and 10 years later I, i'm i'm sorry there's just not that much to show for it it really isn't and even when we were there and when i was working on this um it just always felt like I just never wanted to like pin my hopes to anything. Like yeah. there, there will always be some, oh, this time it's going to work because this time we're going to do it this way. You know, we're going to have this partner or we're going to, we're going to get involved in this other way. I'm like, I, these sound like the same way. Like it just sounds like you're trying to control it. Yeah. And it, I don't think it's going to work, you know, but you don't have the heart to like, like, okay, well tell me what you want us to do from a social and, and communications perspective. But in my heart, I was like, this isn't going to work, you know? Like, yeah. It's just a waste of time. There just needs to be some growing up yeah. of the community. And I don't know, again, I don't, is a company like Nintendo or Sony the right one to do it? Like, maybe they have the wrong intentions. But if there can just be some organization that can run this with maturity, integrity. Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like that's really it, needed. Because we would do, I mean, we would talk to these, like, we would get in calls with, like, oh, we got the, we got the CEO of this company or that company. It's like... These people sound like dirtbags. I don't know. Yeah. Doctor, the doctor. Exactly. Doctor of what? What are you the doctor of? Tell me. <laughs> Let me see some some credentials, credentials. here. Credentials. Are you gonna do my you gonna do my surgery or what? You gonna do, <laughs> give me a filling or something? <laughs> yeah, I think it's. A, I almost feel like it does need to be like an outside third party that's not Nintendo or yeah. one of the publishers because you, as a publisher, you ultimately do have like a biased point of view with your IP and with like your ultimate goal to like sell video games. Um, so it just has to be like another entity that can do a professional job and not have it be two dudes that are, you know, yeah. flying it by the seat of their pants kind of stuff with, with just whatever whim they have. Right. You know? Right. And it, because it, Nintendo got taken for a ride by Panda. Like that's the other thing. It's like they had no idea that that all this stuff was happening behind the scenes. Like they signed them on in good faith, thinking like, okay, you're our partner, yeah, and we're going to be operating together. And that was part of their statement too, of like, Panda is not Nintendo. They're not authorized to do these things on behalf of Nintendo. Right. That didn't stop them. No, but and then Nintendo just it, it, it's like there's egg on your face now because you've exactly now, you've now like hitched your wagon to some creeps to some creeps, and that's who you gave your IP license to. Like, what kind of judgment and you, call and was you, that? And you, you talked to everybody. And this was the best option in the whole the whole community. Yeah. That's not great. No, not at all. Oh, my gosh. So I don't, I don't know what the options are. Who knows what's going to happen. I think anything could happen. I think they'll probably dig in their heels more, knowing how these things yeah. go. They will dig in their and heels And now you've got, more. I mean, you know, this was a big initiative. You've got the teams in Japan involved. Mr. Sakurai knows all about this. And we know what they want. Oh, boy. That's that's a rough conversation to have. Oh my gosh! They're not going to be happy at all. Yeah. So I really feel for the for the folks all. who are working on this, but it, yeah, I, I mean, sorry. It, something needs to give. Yes. Um, um, more and, Nintendo. And stuff. other Nintendo apologies. Um, <laughs> this uh, Pokemon. There's a patch out, yes. and Nintendo has also apologized. They said we take the feedback from players seriously, and we'll continue to work on improvements to the games. This is for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Yeah. Uh, Did you go back to this game after you'd done the patch? Well, this patch, I mean, people, there were varying accounts of how much the patch helped. Okay. Ultimately, it sounds like it's not that much, but I'm not surprised because I think they need a lot of time to work on this stuff. It's not going to be like, oh, we fixed overnight, it overnight. Overnight, yeah. So I think this is the Clipping? first of yes. several performance-related patches. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they had stuff that they needed to fix beyond the visuals. Yeah, I mean, the, for You sure. know, rolling, rolling uh, olives. Uh, olives. Um, That's the same glitch, though. It's like a clipping glitch. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, it, it is meaningful for them to... Acknowledge. Acknowledge the backlash. Yes. Um, I was surprised to see that, actually. Usually they don't acknowledge anything. I think it's good that they did that. Again, who knows if they'll be able to fix these games, but it does speak to the long-term 
effect yeah. that we talked about. Of right. It might it meant it might take multiple games for the impact to mm -hmm. bear itself out in yeah. a game. Yeah. But this is part of that process. Yeah, so exactly. that's good. It's good that that's happening because we I was a little bit worried that after the game set like record breaking sales, whether right. or not they were going to acknowledge something like this. Um, because it's like it's kind of like a why bother from yeah. like, from a business perspective. It's like right. a why bother kind of thing, like selling like hotcakes, who cares? Yeah. Um, but I'm glad that they are. They still care. <laughs> that's good. Um, and hopefully that does mean, you know, for future Pokemon games, um, they, they would be a better sort of plan for quality because um, I, I do think this is pretty pretty glaring yeah you know yeah yeah so I, I think people bad. just need to be patient I, I, I mean people may not want to be patient but I mm -hmm. think the fact is like this a this game is going to take time to get fixed if they can fix it at all yeah and then as we've said into the future now, it may not be immediate are you going back to the yeah. game yeah I will you are? I will okay yeah I yeah. do. I do want to keep playing that. I want to play it too, but I wonder. I wonder if I should wait for these patches to come out more. Well, you might be waiting a while. Oh, you think it's going to be more than this, like early next year? Yeah. Oh. It might be. Oh. I don't know. Oh. I'm not. Like, that's the thing. Nobody. We're not game developers. All these people commenting on this, like, yeah. oh, why? Why wasn't it fixed in a day? Yeah. I know. I, mean, I don't know. Don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, should I wait for a better experience? You know. Well, you might again. Might be waiting Who for knows? All right. There's no there's no roadmap they put out or anything. Okay. Um, the new Mario movie has come out. We have a reaction to that. You should watch it. Yes. We're, we're a week past this, so I don't we don't need to recount it. But just any any fresh thoughts a week later on this? I have one. Oh, and, you do. Well, it kind Say of it, it kind of reflects what is in our in our poll here, mm. which is we have a long time before this movie comes out. Yeah. And we've seen a lot. I still don't know why we got this second trailer when we did. Tra second trailer came pretty soon after the first. It's like a month later. Yeah. What else are they going to do? Like, there's going to be more trailers. There's going to be more stuff. You got four more months till the movie comes out about. You know, I, I would, th like, there's a formula you could follow where it's like every trailer we're introducing or we're highlighting a new character. Mm -hmm. And it's like they could have done that with Princess Peach. They were kind of teasing that. Yeah. They hi but, highlighted two characters, I guess. But we got time. Donkey Kong. Like, that could right. have been a whole other drop later on. Yeah, um, must be an illumination thing. So, I do wonder what else they have in store. Maybe there's just a lot to show. Are we going to get into a zone where it's like, I know everything that happens in the movie because I've seen the mm -hmm. 19 trailers that get put out. Yeah, maybe. Um, were they worried that people were not going to latch on to this or not like it, so they felt like they had to keep showing stuff? I don't know, it's fascinating. Yeah, I wonder what the conversation is like between Illumination and Nintendo because certainly this type of rollout is really different than a video game rollout yeah. and Nintendo's not quite used to that. So I do wonder like what kind of conversations are happening to like put them on this timing. Right. I mean, I feel like in the last, the first trailer was super, like it was watched by almost everybody. Like it was, it seemed to, you know, be super popular. But I wonder what kind of negative feedback or if, if there was any like, glaring negative feedback that came back that made them think about oh we need to like introduce more characters yeah is it pratt well, is it not well let's you know. just jump straight to this poll because this this yeah. plays on this so the question was with several months to go how are you feeling about the amount of information we've been getting on the super mario brothers movie the options where i've been enjoying the trailers i'm on the fence i'm worried they're going to show too much and i haven't liked the trailers and wow 79 percent of people mm -hmm. um have been enjoying the trailers yeah that's quite high. It's very high. It's, it's like a huge majority. But again, that's the thing. You're talking to a video game audience where they consume this type of information at a much rapid, more rapid pace than I would say like a movie audience does. Yeah. So maybe that's the strategy from... Oh, the video game audience. Very, very concerned with spoilers. Yeah. Um, let's see some of the comments we got from Paul. I think the trailers seem like they're showing enough. You could piece together the general plot. That doesn't mean they're showing too much. If you're watching videos that analyze and dissect it all, you're watching too much. Mm. Overall, seems like a very dense film with a lot of stuff in it, so I don't think there's much risk of them showing all the best stuff and there being no surprises. That's a very even-keeled thing to say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't feel like I'm getting spoiled by the trailers, do you? Well, I might in three months before oh, this okay. movie comes out. I mean, it's not going to... The storyline seems generally, like, straightforward. Yeah. 
so. Uh, Nick says, I'm not bothered by the amount we're getting, but two trailers so close together, so far in advance of the movie, surprised me. Mm. It seems like they knew that convincing us will be, it will be good would be an uphill battle. But it's working. Against all odds, I find myself excited for it. So there's that, okay. there's that theory of like, we had to get people over the hump with this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Zroid, can I vote twice? No! <laughs> Uh, the trailers have been fantastic, with the second one in particular really demonstrating to me that this movie will be a blast. However, I must admit I am increasingly getting the sense they are showing too much. For example, it would have been a terrific surprise if they had kept Mario Kart and the appearance of various Kong family members behind the curtain. Movie trailers showing too much is nothing new, though. If anything, it's the standard. Hopefully there will be more fun surprises to come, which they will not spoil. Yeah, I, I, I get the feeling this movie is just like packed full of stuff. And picking out these, like, highlight moments isn't going to decrease the excitement for the overall movie when it comes out. The other feeling I've had now that I've been able to watch this a couple times is, you know, my initial reaction was like, wow, they're not really holding anything back from this movie. And I was, I had been wondering, you know, were they planning for the Mario movies to be a franchise where it's like, well, we, we finished the first movie, now we're going on to the second Mario movie. Mm -hmm. There's so much in this movie, I feel like the, the plan is... Do this one, make sure it's a hit. Yeah. And move on to another IP. Yeah, exactly. Because I was surprised to see the Mario Kart stuff. Right. And the Donkey Kong stuff, you know, sort of in the, the, the format that it was in the trailer. Because it felt like those could be separate I, separate movies. Because you could, you could do a good, very straightforward Mario story. Right. Without all the other belt. Like, you don't need all this Donkey Kong stuff. You don't yeah, need Mario Kart. you don't Karts. need Mario Kart. Right. Exactly. Um, so it's interesting that they're basically we're pulling everything we got. That's what I'm saying. From Mario, yeah. like the kitchen the sink approach. Entire Mushroom Kingdom universe is right. on the table here. Right, yeah. right, and Which we're putting it in here. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that does make me wonder. Like, well, is, is Donkey Kong the next IP now that they've established it mm -hmm. that they would do something with, or is it something completely different? But the right. idea of like, oh, we're gonna get a Mario movie too in like two years, like I. I don't feel like that's going to Right. Happen. Maybe it's more so like we'll get a Zelda movie in two years. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Come on. Nobody's going to be happy with the voices on that. No, they won't. No. Yeah. That's going to be rough. <laughs> um, there was one other story that broke this morning because we got, we got three Nintendo stories. We need one non-Nintendo story. Oh, I, mean, yeah? I don't know if you even saw it. I this. probably didn't see it. Um, Microsoft is going to start to raise the price of their first party game to $70. Which is something Sony already does. Yeah. Um, initial re thoughts, reactions to this. I don't care. As long as it's worth it, I think it's fine. Well, we, we don't care because we're playing these games on Game Pass. Oh, yeah, exactly. I like Game So Pass. it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, it doesn't you know, feel like unpalatable to me. You know, we had that story from a few weeks ago where they were hinting, Phil Spencer was hinting that they might raise the price of hardware. That's right. I heard that. This is another way to make some moolah. You can make some money this time. Yeah. Maybe yeah. all the, maybe all of the above will happen. Raise I think Game Pass is a great deal, you guys. Like, yeah, it is. So, especially if they raise the price, why not? Yeah, like, you just I get Game I Pass. literally my Xbox is a Game Pass machine. That's it's all. Exactly that's all, all I do with it. It's all I do with it right. too. Right. So it's a it's a zilch for me. For like for someone that just consumes games in this way, like it's totally worth it for me. Yeah. You know, I I feel like yeah, I I don't even kind of I don't blanch at all at this because it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't really impact me very much. Right. And it does, I mean, they're they're kind of in the Sony boat where these games do cost a ton of money. Yeah, I get that. And I don't think the Sony backlash, there hasn't really been much backlash. Well, because I think people are, are like okay with the quality of that game. Yeah. So I'm saying like if, if God of War had like Pokemon Scarlet Violet problems, yeah. that would be like Revolt Central. Is Nintendo next though? $70 games? I could see that with whatever next console the they next have. The next console, maybe. Right. Yeah. The $60 games right now. Yeah. Because they've been 60 I think it was Wii. A lot, some of the first party games were $50. Yeah. And then they Switch moved up. Switch was 60 also, Wii U. Wii U was 60 yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. I if, 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 if it has just become a widely accepted and you can get $10 like more. Industry norm. Why not? Yeah, let's do it. Can they not have... Such some some bad quality graphics though. In oh jeez! Can they maybe tighten up those graphics? Yeah, maybe not have an olive rolling problem for a game that I paid sixty bucks for. Oh jeez! Um, we are moving on <laughs> to our questions. Yes. 
each and every week. We get our questions exclusively from our Patreon subscribers. And we also do a weekly bonus Q&A with about a dozen questions um, that you can't get anywhere else. Here is an example of a question that we have answered in a bonus Q&A from Frulio. Who came up with the touching is good slogan for Nintendo DS and who thought it was a good idea? Oh boy. You had a lot to say about this. Yes. Quite a spicy um, answer. Really, with really spicy visuals. fun and spicy um, answer. Yes. So if you're interested in that, um, check out our bonus Q&As. Yeah. Patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. Um, on to our questions for today, though. I'm going to let you keep reading these. This, is, this oh. is a fun little trend here. Oh, no, you weren't ready for I wasn't. This. Okay. I mean, oh, no. I better get, <clears throat> better get ready. To read. Okay, uh, this first question actually comes from Frulio. Also Frulio, the prolific Frulio. Very prolific. Frulio upgraded to a new tier recently because That's right. Frulio is so prolific in our community. Frulio so. knows what's up. Exactly. How sensitive is Nintendo to negative reviews of their games? And how much does it affect sales? Does Nintendo ever persuade reviewers to give their games a favorable score? What say you? Um, so this is, there's a, this is a loaded question. Um, the affecting sales, let's start there. We would always do a lot of research on the PR team to try and quantify this because obviously that's great for us. Right. If it's like, hey, this great review that we got generated, generated this, all these yeah. sales, um, there was nothing conclusive that no. we could find. But, yeah. but to Soft be, metrics. To be fair, you could say that about most marketing activities. Exactly. Did this one thing cause somebody to buy it? Like unless you were doing a survey and, and asking people what was the one thing. Right. You're probably not going to get. You're not going to find data. out. That's what they call the marketing mix. All the stuff together, you jumble it up. It's like gumbo, delicious <laughs> it's a gumbo delicious soup that you feed to the consumer. Right. And then they drink it, and they're happy, um, and they buy your game. So, I mean, they probably aren't hurting if your game's getting great reviews. That's good. Right. Right. But it's it's inconclusive of like, is this the reason this game sold? Yeah. Gangbusters. We don't right. know. We don't know. Um, Sensitive sensitivity though to negative reviews. Nintendo, I will give them a lot of credit, really respected the editorial process of reviewers mm -hmm. and in most cases didn't, I mean, just lived with the score. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was the huge benefit of being at Nintendo. I mean, I worked at Namco. I worked at Konami. We had some turds. Um, yeah. You didn't have to worry about bad reviews in most cases. Right, right. And it was like, oh, is it going to be a 90 or going to be an 85? That was kind of yeah, the big yeah. challenge that you had. And in the, in the cases where, you know, a game got a bad review, like there are companies out there that'll call the editor-in-chief and like berate like, them. why? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what, you, you're, never, you're a moron. We never did. That, that never happened. No. And I really respect that. Yeah. They definitely treated um, media reviewers with respect. Um, obviously, we had one-to-one -one relationships with these people, so... Um, there was a lot of integrity, I think, on the PR team in the way that we handled those relationships with editors. Yeah. Um, I will say that there is a lot of, like, stock in reviews, though. Like, yeah. Nintendo definitely cared. Yes. Deeply yes. about reviews. Again, good thing that the games reviewed right. relatively well most of the time. But if there was a game that was in, like, the 7-6, which there was a few, like, that would cause some major issues. Panic. Yeah. There was yeah. some panic. And, and it would not result in, like, go talk to this editor, make him fix it. It was more so, like, oh, my gosh, like, what can yeah, we do? Yeah, th this pillar that we usually had to fall back on is not there. It's not there. So what are we going to do to, what can we do to communicate stuff about this game that's appealing that's beyond maybe the, uh, a slightly, you know, lower review score? Right, right. Yeah. Um, persuading reviewers to give favorable scores. I mean, in that job, you're always trying to be persuasive. So exactly. You're always trying to put the game in the best light. Yes. So that would involve... Sending it early so people had enough time to play yeah, it. Yeah, it would involve us building a very, like, <clears throat> sort of comprehensive demo flow from when we did previews. Yeah. For editors so they get the best experience going into, you know, a, a new game, yeah. looking at learning if, about a new game. If it's a multiplayer game, making sure people could play multiplayer in mm -hmm. advance, yes. setting up games like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it was never, like... In a, in a gross way of like, hey, no. it would be nice if you could give this a 10, wink, wink. Not a nudge, nudge yeah. kind of way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's funny though, in, in Japan, it, and again, it's, it's not like super shady there, but there is a different expectation of like, yeah. I'll be I'll be, uh, be able to proofread your review. Exactly. For factual accuracy. Yeah, we can't do that um, here. They're always, they're always like, well, you guys can't do that in, in the US. We're like, so no. You would, you would think, 
I mean, we've explained this to you about two dozen times, yeah. but you keep asking. No, no we, we cannot, we cannot do see that. it. Like, how do you not know the review with the review right. score is going to be? Right. Like, so that is a different don't. dynamic that Japan has. That yeah. I don't. I, I mean, you might in the back of your mind. Yeah. If you're sending it to the guy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't it seems, seems, yeah. seems weird. That seems really I'm like glad weird. we don't have to do that here. Um, the, Nintendo's favorite post-launch marketing tactic is the accolades trailer. Yes. If you look at every game launch, there's going to be one. <laughs> and it's basically like every, it's like clockwork. Every time a game comes out, the review comes out, PR team, please yeah. pull the top 10 yeah, reviews, yeah, yeah. get permission. Right. And of course, there's some, there are some publications that was like, you pay money for this. Yeah. That's always a little that weird. That was weird. It's always a little weird when they're like, it, it costs a licensing fee to license my review. That's like uh, Microsoft raising the price of these games. These qu that? quotes ain't free. Quotes are not free. Some of, some of the quotes are free. Some of the quotes are not If anybody free. wants to quote us, we're free. But we're also not reviewing games, so it's a moot point. We don't review it, but... But if we did... You can quote us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Accolade trailers, though. Marketing go-to. All right, um, next question from, I just lost the question. Cerulean Dragon. Cerulean Dragon. Hey, Kit and Krista, with a recent release of Scarlet Violet, a lot of people are taking issue with performance. I have two questions about this. First, do you think the online, game, or the online gaming news media is blowing this a bit out of proportion? I realize there's issues, but to me, it's just unfortunate and isn't ruining the experience for me. Every article I read about the game seems to mention it being broken, buggy, glitchy mess. Even if the article is about something else entirely, like like how to evolve a certain Pokemon, which just hasn't been my experience at all, and I think it's unfair to paint the game in such a light. Secondly, a lot of oddities I have seen seem like something QA would catch in about five seconds. Do you think QA is being deprioritized as a way to combat leaks? Do you think QA should be given um, should be given priority industry wide? I feel like many games have released that haven't spent enough time in testing and as a programmer that bothers me. Oh, I grew up a real programmer is here wow. to help us understand. Great. That, that second point about QA being prioritized for leaks is so fascinating. I had not thought of that. Yeah. Uh, but it's, I don't think it's out of the question. Okay. For, for Pokemon. Wow. Like Nintendo's big thing is like, we need to control everything. Pokemon's big thing is like we cannot have a single iota of anything leak ever. Yeah. Like everyone has their, you know, their like white whales that they're chasing, all of these companies. And they have like this this thing that just irks them to no end in which they, for some reason, if you poke at that specific button, they'll just do like insane things like try to control the Smash community or put out a game that's glitchy or whatever. But so I, I can see that potentially happening i don't think that's the only reason why this game has some of these performance issues but there could be there could have been a conversation about qa when they could start the qa process um due to leaks and, and not spoiling the game yeah i mean that that's really playing with fire if you're doing that because yeah. obviously this is what happens exactly um and I think the timeline is more to blame. Right. Where they just ran out of time and they couldn't fix the stuff that had been identified. I'm sure it had been identified. But I would, if I was making a game, I'd make sure QA was all over that. But you, you're not scared of leaks. Well, maybe we should all be a little bit less scared of leaks. That's what Jeez. I'm saying. Your mentality is like yeah. almost the opposite of theirs. Like you're not a... And, and again, it's always this thing of like, oh, it's coming from inside the... The phone calls coming from inside the house. It's like it's never who you think it is. It's always the babysitter. You know, I. Why? Why? What, does QA have a reason to be leaking things? Have I made them mad? Have I aggrieved them? Do they need to form a union because I've been doing terrible things to them? I don't maybe, know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> That's not out of the question. Yeah. Also, it's just like some some people don't realize like what constitutes as a leak. Like when you're opening oh. the doors to let in a, a large group of outsiders or people that are, you know, not familiar with what your categorization of leak is, mm. there could be some level of risk, especially in the Pokemon to, um, example, because, like, they're so far out with their, like, classification of what is a leak. A lot of the times when these kinds of things happen, it's always, like, the guy's, like, I did not even know that that was. No, I didn't know I could. It's not so do nice that. now I didn't that know what now I that we're working that. more directly with some indie developers. 
like how little they care. It's exactly. just like, here's the code. You didn't ask for it. Here it is. You know, yeah, play if, the game. If, enjoy. If you're gonna do, just just cover it. If you, yeah. if, you know, every every now and then there's like a date. Like it'd be nice if you could stick to this date. Yeah. It's exactly. just like the complete opposite. It's like this is really refreshing. It's really refreshing because guys, this is a video game. I know. It's not like state secrets or something. We're not, you know, like it, it should be something that's a little bit more lighthearted. Like let's be real here. Yeah. Like who cares? Is it blown out of proportion to the first part of the question? I don't think it is. Honestly, I mean, I think definitely this is a clickbaity topic that people want to write about. Right. There, like there are incentives. Clicks perspective. For yeah. continuing to talk about this. Yeah. But I do think that, and, and Nintendo has acknowledged this, I do think that this is something that should not be taken lightly. This is something that doesn't happen often with Nintendo published games. And I, I am always like, when I worked at Nintendo, I was always on my high horse. Like, every game that Nintendo comes, comes out with is so perfect. Like, we never have... You didn't have that Wii U Nintendo Land experience like I, I did. I didn't have that one. I mean, beyond that, I like Switch games. You know, like, most of the... Like, okay, 98% of the time, you can feel very confident right. and proud that you are going to be working on a game or you're going to be launching a game or when, your game, when that game launches, it's going to be good. And this, they're not going to have these issues. This was very... This is like a fraction of the pain of my Nintendo Land experience with those crashes on Thanksgiving. Are you joking? This is nothing. I feel like this was really embarrassing. Oh, it was. But personally for me. Oh, I think personally for me, I was embarrassed for them. All right. Like I just, I couldn't, I honestly like, when you t first told me, I was like, no. Yeah. I don't believe That you. is annoying though, when people just glom onto something and like just parrot it. Yeah. Like, just because it's a thing to talk about. Sure. I, I, I agree. I, I don't think that's the case. I mean, if you... I think, I think that it, it's warranted here. Yeah, I think... I don't... I mean, maybe if you're writing an article about how to evolve a Pokemon, you don't need to talk about the glitch. You know? And I'm somebody who said, like, I've I've had no problems, like, playing through these games or enjoying these games because Until of it. Until the Olive incident. But... Yeah. Game ending. Yeah. We had to restart the software. Let's move on. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's embarrassing. Kai X. Kai X. With Dragalia Lost coming to it. See, I just I just started reading the question. Okay, go for it. You didn't say uh, the I've whole been wondering way. what factors are considered when making the decision to end a live service game. Is it strictly a money thing in the short term? Or are there other factors considered as well? Thank you both so much for doing these Q&As. It's really nice to be able to finally get answers to some of these more detailed questions that have popped into my head over the years. Of course. Um, yeah, these live service well, first of all, let's talk about this mobile stuff that Nintendo does that's just doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Um, so I think it's less of, you know, well, just I, it so being I, a live service I game. think it depends on the company. Right. Because at some company, it is a money thing. Yeah. At Nintendo, it's not a money thing. Right, right. Exactly. And I think, again, it's, it's a larger issue than just one game. Yeah. It's an issue of Nintendo's mobile business. Right. Not really going the way that they want it to go. Right. You know, and, and these games not having sort of the longevity or like whatever else factors into their decision making of what makes it successful or not doesn't seem like it's it's a success. And we worked on the mobile stuff as well. And towards the end of our time there, it was kind of like, eh, I don't know about this. Yeah. I mean, sometimes there are... You know, the roadmap for these things can get planned out pretty far out. Yeah. And even if something's not successful now, you could talk yourself into saying like, well, once we get through the end of this roadmap. Could be good. Could be good. So let's give it a shot. And again, if you're at Nintendo and, and you don't have those money crunch worries, why not? Um, there might be a shared resource thing where, well, I could keep, you know, X developers working on this game that's kind of not doing it. Or we could move them over to this promising new project. Yeah. Yeah. That's a thing. Um, there could be, in the case that there's a license involved, you might need to stick it out for some amount of time. Mm -hmm. You might be obligated to, unless they say, yeah, we're, we're not cool with this too, so let's just stop. Um, there, there's a million different reasons. But I, th yeah. I think that's my ultimate answer is like it depends on the company and their, their circumstances because that will drive what they're yeah. motivated by. And I think Nintendo's motivated by something very different than traditional companies that are on mobile yeah. platforms. Where it's like, yeah, it's you want that whale, you want the you want to monetize as like much as possible. But I think Nintendo has a very different view of their mobile business, and I, I don't, I honestly don't think it's going according to plan. So yeah. I think they're trying to pull back um, on that. 
Uh, Captain Alex, I may be getting ahead of myself here, but in your personal opinions, do you expect whatever console comes after the Switch to have backwards compatibility? It seems like a no-brainer for Nintendo to ease the transition to a new console the same way they did with DS to 3DS, but do you think capitalism these days might have Nintendo thinking otherwise? Why make Mario Kart 8 Deluxe backwards compatible when they can get us to buy Mario 8 Super Deluxe on the next gen Nintendo console? Mm, they're not good with backwards compatibility in the past. So. Um, my answer is I, I don't know. It sort of depends on is it going to be like a Switch form factor or is it going to be something completely totally different? different? Yeah. Because um, we've seen, you know, there are just formats that are so different, like they don't lend themselves to backwards compatibility because you, yeah. you need like, like, like original DS games. Like, well, you need two screens, you need a touch screen. Mm -hmm. And sure. it's like, well, we don't have anything that can do that, so we're just never gonna release them again. I think the form factor of the system will play a role in that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the whole question of, like, do your purchases get rolled over? I'm gonna will say you no. Have ac oh, geez. They just don't seem to have a good track record of this. And I think that they also know that people will buy it again. There's a there was one game I think that I've literally bought like four times. But there are games like like think about third party games that aren't going to get re released. Like that would be really disappointing if it was just like everything you have on your Switch is just well it's just on your Switch forever it's gone. Yeah. I mean you can barely transfer yeah. it over to, to another Switch. I don't so. know. I mean this this is one of. The you big think you're questions. gonna be able to get Animal Crossing without that island transfer tool over to the next I console? Know. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think so. That's my answer. I, I don't know. Sorry, Captain Alex, but I think no. <laughs> it is. It is kind of like a huge platform question. Yeah. Of like re resources and. Exactly, and like also just like the the logistics. It's one of those things. Of setting where something up for you to do that. It'll make your head spin when you think of all yeah. the what implications. The, what about the cloud, you guys? How does the cloud work? It's, you're gonna try to. There's gonna be some sort of nonsense about this. I can already tell. It'd be annoying. Next question. Next question. Link, the hero of winds. What are some things you have done with your jobs at Nintendo if you didn't have to worry about pushback from the higher? Oh, ups? those pesky higher ups. <laughs> it's all your fault. Um, I'm just kidding. You know, we are getting to be about the five year, I think we may have passed it, or it's right around now, the five year anniversary of the Nintendo Power podcast, which- um, Five years? I'm, I'm amazed it made it five years. Seriously? Yeah. Oh my God. Seriously, five years. And that was something that I Whoa. had a hand in helping to create. What do you mean? You literally created And see through the years. I'm, I'm glad you, they're continuing on with it. I think you need to take more credit for that. Um, okay. This was one of the projects where we were unbelievably hamstrung by a lot of so just irrational, it. nonsensical guidelines and misunderstandings that made it hard to do anything. Yeah. I'm proud of what we were able to do within those constraints, mm -hmm. but I, I continue to feel is like such an underutilized opportunity for the company. Yeah, um, totally. To... Like you have to operate under these very tight guidelines. Yeah, I mean, ask whereas yourself, if you didn't have those, it could be like it could blow up to this like really. Right. I mean, thing. ask yourself why there's no Nintendo developers on the Nintendo Power podcast talking about their games. Mm -hmm. um, ask yourself why the conversations about games on that is a little bit lukewarm. Yeah. Um, why is it only once a month? Yeah. Obviously, we are huge believers in the podcast platform, Clearly. medium. 43 episodes later. And, yeah. I mean, we had so many ideas of what we could do with this that, yeah. like, we just, couldn't do any of them. couldn't do it. Yeah, you just uh, totally... You could barely do the bare minimum, and at that point you were like, I can't fight this right, battle anymore. Right, right. So, yeah. continu continues to feel like Reggie, a huge... Reggie, too. was a huge supporter. Oh, Reggie. He was the one that made it happen, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. And then he left, and it was like, oh my god, it's gonna well, he he understood the value. I know of like think of what are all the things we could do now that we have a podcast like, that we couldn't do before. I remember when Reggie was like so passionate about it. Yeah, like it immediately like boistered your spirit to like keep fighting, 
And then, this, and then Reggie left, and so it was just like, oh yeah. my gosh, this is going to be a Why has Reggie never been on the podcast? Why has Doug Bowser never been on the I podcast? Know. Ask yourself. Well, Ask he yourself. actually, Doug Bowser has been on the podcast. But early days. Re recently. Never again. Ask yourself this. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I think um, my answer to this may be a bit broad, but it's like there's things that we did, but I feel like with the sort of the pushback and the constraints we're working against, we can only do them like 20% of the way. Yeah. Like I would love to have taken something like the Nintendo inspired Instagram account, like a hundred percent of the way, like where we did have, you know, free use of the Nintendo IP where we could do all of these cool things. Like we can even do like a simple, you know, a simple video that was like making a cake with Nintendo IP. Like even yeah. like little things that we wanted to do, it was so hard for us to get that approved that I always felt like, if I didn't have to work in this tiny box, like it could be big. And you could see the goal in front of right. you, but you are trapped in your tiny box and you can never reach it and it, yeah. it sucks. So yeah, I think that's that that would be it. Is like we had all these things that we sort of launched, but in this environment where you were totally like shackled to the wall and you can see your goal in front of you, but you can never reach it. So I'm glad that we don't have to deal with that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty hard. It's a hard it's a hard world to live in, you know. Um all right. Mr. Rogers, when a game is being judged for a VGA, a game of the year or a similar end of the year award, should the game be judged based on how the game initially launched or should it be judged based on the most up-to-date version where patches can be applied that can fix numerous bugs and problems? Um I what feel like say you? the first impressions of a game are going to color how people feel about yeah. it. It's like your first impressions of a human. So, you know, Pokemon or Cyberpunk, those things, in the case of Cyberpunk, it, it took a long time, but they did eventually yeah. fix it. But right. if you are thinking about a game of the year or some sort of end of year accolade, you're not going to forget that. Right. And you're not going to forget that you didn't hit it out of the park on the first try. Right. Right. So I don't think it would completely mean like oh it's off the it's, it's off, but it'll it it'll, might it could hold it back. It will. Um, I think it will color your experience. Right. Yeah, just like exactly, just like a person. Like if you had a really bad first impression of somebody, yeah, it doesn't mean that you're gonna like never you know have any sort of relationship with this person ever again. Yeah. But the second time you meet them. You're probably going to be a little bit more cautious. You yeah. Know? And, and even, even if the things had been fixed in the year, like as you're going through the thought process, you're going to say, well, oh, remember well, when. It, it, runs, it runs great now. But. But it didn't when it came out. Yeah. So I think it's, you just have this ongoing feel for a game mm -hmm. that is kind of neither locked into the beginning or the current. It's yeah. just this continuum. Yeah. And then you have that thing too where it's like you always say like remember when dot 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 yeah like i think forever for pokemon scarlet we're gonna say it will remember when you know whenever when the game you know, is fixed can, and it's perfect yeah i mean there, we know the list of infamous like infamous game launches like yeah. the assassin's creed unity yeah that game was a joke yeah. cyberpunk that game was a joke yeah. now pokemon that game was a joke yeah people will never forget you'll never live you'll never down. live it down that's why yeah. it's like really unfortunate and embarrassing right. when that happens so Bo yes Bodhi though the beginning of the Bodhi or the end of the Bodhi? It better be good from beginning to end for me to consider it for Bodhi. Oh my goodness. Unless you like had like a Paul Gale Network workout and you transformed we have that too. a mediocre Bodhi to Goaty Bodhi. Maybe. Uh, yeah. A little plug for our picture. We, we have um, our, our uh, on-site sensei, Paul Gale, yes. doing regular workout so videos cool. in our fitness channel. He did a, a Mario um, trailer right. run session that was great. These are really fun. They're really good. Paul Gale is jacked. So, <laughs> so you know that's, that's all the proof you need. <laughs> Just ask Paul Gale yes. to take his shirt off and he'll show you his <laughs> six-pack. And then you'll understand why you should join our Patreon community. Um, okay. Pikmin Sneezkov. I love Sneezkov. Me too. Um, hi, Kit and Krista. I would like to ask, do you know any behind-the-scenes stories of me first? Uh-oh. I won't Be tell careful. I, okay. Why did you put this not in the bonus Q&A? Um, <laughs> let me continue with this question. Example, did Nintendo hire folks to moder <laughs> moderate the platform or... <laughs> or has it become a part-time responsibility of existing staff? Are you too involved in the Miiverse in any way? Thanks. 
Uh, so there can were... I answer this question again? Bonus q &A. Well, Sneezkov is not part of the tier to get the bonus oh, Q&A. Oh, Sneezkov. I'll answer it for you in the so, Discord. So, well, all right. You go as far as you can, and then we'll take it into the Discord yeah, for Sneezkov. Yeah, I'll take it into the Discord for you, Sneezkov. Um, there were oh, moderators. Um, it was the same company that did Flipnote Studio. I was just going to say. Hatina. Hatina. Um, they yes. were the people who were doing most of the moderation. Yes. And, I mean, honestly, it was a big... A big undertaking. It was a huge undertaking. Which ultimately became part of the reason. You're going back to Kai X's question. Like, that Why was, that was a huge um, obligation mm -hmm. to carry this moderation staff. Yeah. To do all of this work for all these posts. It was crazy. It's like, you know, any true social network. Right. Like, UGC platform. Like, you have to have, like, a solid foundation of moderation or else it just goes completely haywire. Yeah. Yeah, there was, and, and that team was actually based in Japan. So we had so many conversations with that team about like what they need to moderate for and why. I'll leave it there. I have made spreadsheets upon spreadsheets of words to not, to, moder to, to moderate for. I mean, you just make those lists in your spare time, too. I do. You just like writing lists of bad words. Do you guys know how many different ways you can spell a bad word with like leak speak? <laughs> Let me tell you. It's a lot of ways. To get sneak past. Oh, yeah. You know all the ways. I know all the ways because I wrote that list. Oh, goodness. I wrote that list. And then we then we used it when we launched social. I gave that list to the social moderators and I was like, here, take this. Be on your way, young one. Oh, no. But yeah, no, we were super involved in the moderation stuff because it would always become like a big PR to do if right. something bad happened. Yeah. And bad things definitely happened. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, you know, we try to get in front of this kind of stuff. But, you know, we, we certainly were not like experts in moderation and... So, yeah, we did depend uh, on the outside agency to yeah, help us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They had to, like, ramp up the moderation one time, too, because it was, like, real bad. Yeah. And they were in Japan, so they had to work, like, these random hours, I oh, remember. gosh. <sighs> All right. I'll tell my funny story to you, Pikmin Sneezkoff, in the Discord. Please be Get ready. Be, please be on the lookout. Uh, all right. 042. Hello, Kit and Krista. I noticed that the creator community, oh, sorry, creator economy seems to be a growing market as of late. I'm a bit curious to learn more about it from your experience. Do you both believe many people should consider being content creators, whether as a hobby or a business? Do you think introverts or the more quiet side should even consider, or is it better suited for someone more outgoing? What skills are needed? How much time and investment are needed? Um... So, I mean, there's a lot of examples of people making this, you know, a full-time career, ourselves included. Yes. Um, and there's definitely a lot of tools and opportunities. Um, you know, we use Patreon as our main venture for this. Yeah. And it's a great platform. We really, I mean, we had not used Patreon before. Right. Um, so we had kind of had to figure it out, and but it's been really good <clears throat> and, you know, seems to be a good platform for our subscribers as well. Um, and there's other ways you can monetize now on, you know, YouTube mm -hmm. or, um, you know, the, more and more platforms are finding ways to monetize. Yeah, I think more and more platforms mm -hmm. realize that to keep creative talent on the platform, they need to give creators a way to right. make this into <clears throat> like, um, a career. Like TikTok is a massive, massive platform, but their monetization is, is, is not good. Yeah. Um, so if you are trying to make a living making TikToks, yeah. Might, might be harder. That's what I'm saying. Like the TikTok people that have like millions of views, they only have the views, but they have no actual yeah. rev revenue around right. it, which is really tough. So, you know, you can, you know, make money through this, but I think the challenge is like, how do you break out among all these people? It's very competitive. And yeah. obviously we had a, le a leg up, fortunately, because yeah. people knew us from Nintendo. If you were starting from scratch, that's a different road it's and, really and, a, and, a, and a very, yeah. very challenging road It's a crowded as well. marketplace. Yeah, so you would need to think really hard of like, what, you your know, niche is, what am I contributing yeah, here that's contributing. new? How am I differentiating myself from what's already out there? Yeah. Like, can, do I have any relationships? Like, do I know anybody who's doing this who can help me get a foot in the door? Or yeah. can, like, can I appear in one of their things to right. get my name out there? Yeah. <laughs> that's your conclusion? No, no, yeah. I was going to, I was going to say something else after oh, you please. made this point. Please. I, I was going to say that for the first time, you know, it's been something that's different for us. And I, I think it's it's definitely a bit challenging, but you know, we, we're figuring it out as we go along, is that before the the content creation part of it, like the making of the videos and the podcast and all the creative side of it 
was the only thing that you and I really had to focus on. And now there's the business side of it right. as well. So not only do we need to like keep being creative and making cool content for you guys, hopefully you <laughs> like it. Um, but we also have to do like the business side of it. Right. And like understanding like how to keep this going with the different revenue mm -hmm. streams that we have. So I think that's something that I didn't think would be as difficult when I when we went full time on this. And that's some, something that I'm like so Sweet ignorance. I know. <laughs> my livelihood depends on this video. That's right. This is why when I look at like YouTube analytics, my heart literally stops. There's I'm nothing like, new with that though. Just like oh that's God. been a that's been a years long <laughs> this thing. Isn't, this isn't going well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like, you know, you really have to like it's like a left brain, right brain kind of thing, right? You have to like really think about how you can keep this going from a revenue perspective yeah. and like also continue to do the, the other side, which is the creative right, side. Right, right, right. Um, and, that, and that's like some of the best advice that anybody who's been doing this will give you is like you do need to approach it like a business and it's, yeah. not, just, it's not just you making fun videos. Like that is an important part of it. But... If you are doing it as a living, you need to yes. have that planned out and understand like what what is making you money and is it enough and how does that all work? Exactly. So, exactly. Like anything else, it, it can be a bit complicated once you dive into right. it. And but... there's going to be some unexpected things I think that you may not realize that you have to do. Sure. I was doing something this weekend and I was like, why uh. is this so difficult? <laughs> Please, I'm not. I do not have the expertise to do this particular task. Oh gosh. Um, all right, Shuriken. A last question. Last question. No, it's Shuriken. Oh, I'm sorry, Shuriken. The pronunciation guide is right there. Oh, it's there. right there. Shuriken. I've already been chided for this once before. Oh, I'm Don't sorry. be next. I didn't read this at the bottom. Okay. I mean, you could you could just argue. You could have you could have you could have you, you could have just, just spelled e. it Shuriken from the beginning and avoided this problem. I'm just saying. Don't be mean to them. <laughs> <laughs> you need them. Shuriken and I have had some fun back and forth. I'm just saying. Oh no. Don't, don't take it, these people. Okay. <laughs> Calling units, Kit and Krista, all caps. Sega has just offered you to a job making videos under the name Sega Second with Kit and Krista. Oh, with Krista and Kit. Oh, I'm first. Wow. The slogan of the series is Sega Second is never a second. <laughs> do you accept the offer or do you decline? I don't know why I awarded it like a spy message because I'm just bored. <laughs> um, I have always felt... That if I have offended uh, the karma of my life, then I will eventually become the brand manager for Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> um, this is not far from that. Uh, I will say, you know, my animosity towards Sega is mostly directed at, at Sonic. And there's lots of other Sega Genesis, games that you love. Genesis level, Genesis era Sonic. And now, like, the rest of Sega is pretty, pretty fine with me. Yes. I love Yakuza. I, I, that's a series I legitimately love. Yeah, exactly. Um, they've got all the Atlas stuff. So like, right. there, there's Persona. a lot you could there's a lot you could do. Right. Omitting Sonic. Right. Just just don't but do it. But you couldn't probably do it if you were a Sega second. Well, you could do a dedicated Sega show with, or Sonic show with somebody else. Our good friend Katie. Oh. She could she could do that, right? I don't think she would want to. I think she's going to want you to do it. Oh. Katie's busy. She got brands Jeez. to run. Uh, well, in that case, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I kind of like this. Okay. I want to just be myself and not have to be beholden to well, a single brain. the creator economy don't work out. That could, oh no! that could be in your future. If your karma blows up in your face. I have good karma. Do you? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> it's all related. All right. Yeah. That is the end of our questions. Sure is. From our wonderful Patreon subscribers. If you want to ask a question or get a question answered, join us at patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. Keep this economy going yes. for us, please. That's right. Um, all right. Should we move on to superstar shout outs? Let's. There's been some changes on this list. That's never a good sign for you. I'm going to, I'm going to. You get, a, you get confused by this. There's, there's a change that maybe we need to make right now. Hold on. Right now? Yeah, yeah. Can I start? I'll start reading the superstars while you make a change. Oh, I'm making it right now. Go ahead. Aaron Hash. Ben Icorn. Maru Mayhem. Ionverse. Jordan Collette. Kiss My Flapjack. Mike Chin. Mr. Rogers. Rain Tech. Roy Eschke. 
Simon Barrera. Switching it up underscore. Cephazon. The shark among men. VGM Life. Link, the hero of winds. Angela Bycroft. And her pig Molly. We're changing her picture to include Molly. And Turbocharged Nerd. Woohoo! You always forget Turbocharged Nerd. If I'm Turbocharged Nerd, I'm living. No, you're gonna do Turbocharged Nerd. I gotta do Molly. You're gonna be immediately Kidarati for life. <laughs> oh my gosh. Molly, though. I'm moving Turbocharged Nerd up. <laughs> Uh, one up club though. Okay. That's what's next. Here we go. You realize any change you make, I cannot see on this right now. Oh, I just made the change and you did not. You disregarded the change. Because well, so. I can't see it. It doesn't matter. Okay. <sighs> this is quickly falling apart. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron Burgundy. Burgundy. Adam and Ansley. A Jean Malari. Ali Alejandro. Alexandra Pratt. Astro Death. Pookum Dano. Brad SF56. Bruce Dash. Chancellor Fairley. Christopher Lay. Cozy Tar. Captain Cinnamon Buns. Captain Alex. C Roper 17. Daniel Colt. Daniel Valencia. Dachshund. Doo Doo Face. Douglas Chomix. Dino Punch. Elite Peach. Espars 50. Esrato. Fart Priest 69. Furbound. Fernie and Jess Forever. Fred Rossi. Gar. Garrett Holfish. Ian Shea. Israel Izzy. Jay Rando. Jabroni Jones. Jackie Z. JK99. JBJ. Jeff Yoakum. Jeffrey Hernandez. Jerry92602. Jesse Hernandez. John Responte. Jonathan Rowe. Jordan Hemmerly. Joseph DeHaze. Joshua Clements. Juji Fruit. Just Camtro. Kai Comercio. Kawa2796. Kelp Shake. Kevin Delane. Christopia Party With Me. Kyle Gamer Barry Rookie. Kyle Kretzer. Kyle LaBeouf. Kyler Nelson. Linnell Stickman. Lego My Frogo. Lama. Lit. Lucas Pico. Mad Dog 5981. Marky Man 64. Matthew Rewald. Mecha Dragon 101. Megan. Michael Cravens. Michael White. Mikey. Mr. Andy Pong. Murph. Mitran. Nazar. Nathan Burkhart. Panda Buns. Paul Gale Network. Piano Psychopath. Prime Factor. Prince Charmless. Quinn Hardigan. Raver. Ray Charon. Ryuji Utsuho Oku. Renee Rivers. Reese Williams. Ryoth One. R.J. Kern. Rob Osborne. Rocks. Rianetta. Sam Newland. Sharif Jackson. Sheer Cold Vanilla. Shinryu. Slowbro. Schmiggles. Silly Ferret. Spicy Munchkin. Steel Citrone. Tefu. Thomas Alvarez. Thomas O'Rourke. Travis Torline. Troopage. Tugs Puppy Bear. Tuscoob. Tyler Geis. Video Game Stupid. Virtual Bot. Wicked Davy. Will Ernst. Will Johnson. Zutaverf. Zelgaroth. Zroid! One. That was a close one. I don't Almost know what you're talking didn't make about. It, but that was a close one. You didn't make it? You didn't make it. You were confused because your thing wasn't updated. Huh? Anyways, time to wrap it up. Don't forget to follow us on Patreon. We are patreon.com slash Kit and Krista to keep all of this going. Please. Yes. Help us. Uh, if you're watching this on video, do us a favor and subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you are listening on audio, you can give us a five-star review and leave uh, a short little text blurb for us as well. Yes, it helps us out a lot. Don't forget to follow us on our other social media channels. We are on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, YouTube. That's right. See us there. We will be there. Um, we will be back very soon with more stuff. <laughs> I don't know wow. why I said that. Strong ending. Strong ending. We'll Super be back strong. at some point. Unless we're in jail, then we won't be back. Uh, All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.